Old School Essentials Smoke and Snow campaign. When we last left our heroes, they had travelled from their colonial settlement of New Seal Land. They travelled to the west to a another reputed colony known as Castlemaine. They found the place in ruins, signs of violence there, and they found a single survivor. The survivor was able to tell them eventually that some great beast had come and attacked the village and had carried the villagers off and maimed and eaten them. They eventually encountered this beast and it turned out to be this strange bear-like creature who was, instead of having a roar, it effectively mimicked a human voice calling out for help. They were able to defeat this creature by digging a pit trap and luring it in. They then skinned it, whatever things they could from its body, and the survivor back to their village. And that is where we left off last time. So I'm hoping you guys can all see the map. I'm just going to center it. There we go. So you should be able to see the hex that you guys have explored. Obviously the ruins there are Castle Main, which is a couple of days, sorry, a couple of, about 12 miles to the west of you. Okay, so it took, the first session took approximately six days with all the traveling and stuff like that. So when we start, obviously you've taken the survivor, Horatio McGee, you took him back to New Zealand. Now, I'm just going to make a quick roll on this handy dandy weather majigio that I've found to see what the weather's like. Okay, so as we start the second session, the weather is clear. The temperature's pretty moderate, so between sort of 4 and 10 degrees Celsius. You know, it's not exactly tropical, but you're not going to freeze to death if you're not going out with the big furs on. There's a light wind, about sort of two miles an hour. Doesn't really have any game effect, but there's a gentle breeze blowing, which you can probably hear outside if uh, my microphone's picking it up. Okay, so you've all headed back to the village with the ratio of McGee, as I described. Now, during the course of the evening, after your return, you receive the sad news that one of the oldest colonists, Harriet Bennett, who was a, a young, well, an old woman, who was a wig maker by trade, has died during the night. The, the village apothecary has a look at her, and it seems to be natural causes. She was a very old woman. Um, the, the apothecary says there's nothing really to be done, and most of the the villagers have sort of gathered around to pay their respects. They've put her body in one of the sort of small huts that no one's occupying currently. Obviously, with the weather being fairly cold, they're like, oh, we, we can leave the body there until we've got time to do the appropriate burial, rites, prayers, etc. However, as this is going on, you guys sort of being stood with the mess of the villagers, sort of looking at the body, you know, saying your respects and whatever, you notice that Horatio McGee, the man you rescued from the ruins of Castlemaine, he's, he's looking extremely nervous as this whole tableau is unfolding in front of you. And you notice, and all of you notice, I'm not going to actually make a roll for it, but you notice that every like so often when he thinks no one's looking, he keeps sort of nervously like glancing at the body of... Uh, Harriet Bennett, which they're basically sort of laid out on some furs and sort of covered her over with a blanket, so that just her head's poking out. Her facial expression is fairly peaceful. She died in her sleep, so they've crossed her arms over her chest, wrapped her up in furs, and just like a, a head, starting to gain the slightly ashen pallor of death is sort of poking out the top. But like I said, she's got a fairly peaceful expression on her face, died in her sleep. But you notice um, McGee keeps sort of like nervously glancing at the body. And then occasionally he'll sort of nervously like lean out of the hut that people are gathering in and sort of look up. And then he, he ducks back in. He looks quite skittish and a little bit jumpy. 
which yeah he did in Castlemaine for obvious reasons but he seemed to have calmed down once he got back to the village and he was settled whereas now he again looks very nervous and quite quite scared to be honest and how long has he been back here with us he's been back here with you for about a day okay and for the first day he was kind of calm and collected yeah and was... once he got back to the village and you were like oh it's all safe here you know the, the village apothecary checked him out they, they probably gave him some like tea and some like warm food you know because he'd, he'd been hiding out in his dank hut in like castle main not daring to go out and get food or anything once he got a meal in him and he got some warm drink in him and he and he realized he was safe he'd started to calm down a bit but now the the announcement of the like i said the, the natural death of miss bennett seems to have like spooked him or set him on edge and he, he again he started to get that sort of slightly furtive sort of worried look on his features over to you guys I'll sidle over to him. Yeah, no problem. He's, um, you notice as you sidle over to him that he's like obviously deliberately sort of stood as near to the door as he possibly can while still being like within the building. He, um, he starts a little as you approach it. He's like, oh, oh, uh, oh sorry, Oscar. I, uh, I, I, I d d didn't see you there. Well, I'm lost in your thoughts, were you? Um, yes, I know. It's, it, it, it's very sad. Uh, um, y y yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. V v very sad indeed. And he, he nervously glances over at the body again. Um, did, 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 obviously, I'd, I'd not really met her, only having been here for a day. Uh, did, did, did you know her well? Not especially. She uh, she was a, a wig maker and uh, uh, don't really require a wig. And I, I, I hear their um, I hear there's something of a of a, of a mark of status and uh, for, for the well to do and and, and all that. But um, I, I didn't know she was a wig maker. Like I said, I, I I didn't really know her at all. Yeah, I, I left all that behind when I came here. And fresh start and all that. As as you're sort of talking, he he leans in a bit closer to you, Oscar, and he, he lowers his voice and he says, uh, so "Sorry if this if this seems like a bit of a a, a rude question, but um, how how does your community bury their bodies? And this hasn't been defined, so feel free to freestyle if you wish." In um, we we have a an area set aside outside the village um i'll just gesture out out of the door up up yonder um they're normally um laid in state for a day or so and then we'll have the priests come over and uh, we'll bury bury her up there um say some prayers and usher usher her off to, uh, to a better place all being well he, he, he leans in a bit closer and he's like, okay, you, you, you don't, uh, you, you don't cremate your, your bodies or anything then? Only in uh, exceptional circumstances. Okay, um, I, 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 I see. And he, he's like wringing his hands sort of like nervously as he's talking and keeps like glancing around. You see like a few like beads of sweat have <laughs> broken out on his face. Um... What's what's wrong? Um, um, well, uh, you, you th th this is the first person you've you, you've lost since you settled here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> is it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. He says, uh, yeah. He says, look, um, you, you 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 need to burn the body or it or, or at least s secure it in some way it, it, it's not safe otherwise what do you mean not not safe for the body or for the rest of us yes 
Yes, both. He says, he says, he says listen, when we when we first um, we first settled in Castlemaine, I, 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 as you're aware, there was uh, there's a number of stone buildings already there, but we, we built some extra timber buildings to, to go with them. And uh, when we were building them, unfortunately, uh, uh, a couple of the uh, the villagers were, were killed in an accident. Uh, a large a large log uh, fell on two of them and uh, before, before we could help them they, they had perished um we, we 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 did we did rather like yourself we we, we buried them I mean, we, because of the cold weather we couldn't dig particularly deep graves but we buried them we said prayers and all that however that, that the next very night uh, as darkness fell their their bodies clawed their way out of their own graves and they, they, they started walking. I tell you, w walking out of the out of the village, he heading north. W w when one of the villagers tried to stop them, they, 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 they slew him. Only for him to then get up and follow them north. Uh, that, that's the, that's one of the other reasons I was hiding in my hut. It wasn't only that damn bear creature or whatever it was uh, uh, that I was afraid of. Uh, I'd heard it killing some of the villagers I was worried that they were going to they would also be roaming around outside the outside my hut but when you when you rescued me I thought I, I thought I thought you think me mad if I was to say that, uh, that the dead of villagers had been roaming around so, so, so I didn't say anything I mean it, it, it didn't, didn't seem uh, it didn't seem necessary at the time but now this this um this poor woman's passed away oh, sorry how long did it take for this it, it was it was a it was a soon but when darkness fell on the the evening after their death that that was when it happened in the village okay. like i say we look outside <laughs> is the sun still high in the sky yeah it, it, it's, <laughs> it's it's early morning because basically they, they, they woke up in the morning found found the woman dead and like only, right. only a couple of hours passed as the the headsman's like gathered the village and been like oh unfortunately okay. our um our fellow, uh, our fellow settler has unfortunately has passed away, and you, there's been a bit of talk about her, and you know, sort of chat, okay. and they've put, put her in this hut. So it's taken a couple of hours, but we're probably on about sort of like 10 a.m. in the morning. All right. Um, so, uh, who do we have a um, a priest? You, yeah, you'll have a priest. Let me just have a look at the uh, the list of villagers I've got, and I'll pick one to be a likely looking priest. And if we don't have a dedicated one, we're going to have one of those lay people who just happen to be the most devout and they bought the most like complete religious text with them. And now they are the de facto priests. Okay. Dinky ass country priest. <laughs> okay. So handily, I, I left a number of the, um, the, the priests with their uh, jobs blank so I could fill them in for just this, uh, this sort of a emergency. Okay, so I'm scrolling down the names. Oh, it's it's that one. Okay, so the the priest of the village, and obviously he's a priest. He's not necessarily like a cleric in terms of the class, but he's like is a priest. His name is Azraya Grove. Ah, we should we should speak with. Um... Uh, Mr. Grove. He says, um, yeah, yes, um, possibly. Yeah. Um, like I say, I, I haven't mentioned it. I thought most people would think I, they would think I was adult, but. Um, it, 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 uh, yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, but uh, I suppose we have to speak with him anyway. Okay, well, well, you can you can see it. Azraya Grove. He's uh, obviously he's been sort of stood near the body, you know, sort of overseeing proceedings as the priest. So, just to get you guys involved, uh, Johannes, what does Azraya Grove, the, the the priest of this village, look like? Do you have a, a defined profession for this person? Priest. In in your, because I know that you rolled for. Unless this is like no, a, there's, a there's, new... there's no, not not all of them have defined professions. Yeah, okay, right, right. So I'm gonna say um, um, he is um, 
getting a bit on on the years which by which i mean like his hairline is rapidly climbing up mm -hmm. however he still has uh, uh a fairly uh sort of robust stature to him however um one hand uh, a hook or, or an equivalent um attachment tool um okay and uh there's a uh he he has a lot of burn damage on his body okay Lovely. okay because next. he was previously a blacksmith and things went wrong lost his hand burned a bunch of his body um and now uh, is, is doing other things among which i guess is uh uh attending to the gods okay so rob what sort of priest is Azriah Grove? Is he like one of these sort of, you know, like sort of Baptist -like preachers giving it the giving it the, <laughs> the praise Jeebus? Or is he like a bit more reserved? Like if, if you were talking to him, how would he come come across as like a person? Like if you were um, speaking to him? I kind of see him as a bit of a because he wasn't always a priest, so he's not that kind of um it feels kind of more reserved, more kind of okay. came to it late in life and kind of, you know, fully believes in it, but it's not there. He's not there to try and make everyone the same and, and, <clears throat> um, and see him as a kind of a little bit of a wheeler dealer type kind of, um, you know, doing that part, but also been able to kind of keep a lot of this stuff moving and, you know, um, making deals and, 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 and that kind of stuff and um, you know kind of filling in way more than just kind of being a, a mm -hmm. relatively i don't want to say timid but kind of quiet and reserved yeah, but, but more sort of like held back yeah yeah okay so yeah as you're as you're talking to to your frightened uh, fellow oscar you can see as riot grove he stood there wearing his sort of his gray and white sort of like priestly vestments Obviously, as we've now established, he has like a, a hook for one hand. And um, you can see, like, cause obviously there's a, a lot of villagers have crowded in here to pay their last respects. And um, you can see that he's like, he's like talking with some of them and he's just sort of saying, uh, yes, it was a, it was a terrible shock for us there about uh, Miss Bennett. But she, she led a good life uh, and at least, uh, at least she made it to, she made it to see this, this wonderful, land that is uh, opened up in front of us uh, it, it, it is a shame that she won't uh, she won't live to see more of it but she's she she's with the she's with the the angels now so uh, would that we should all be so lucky and there's various that, that's just a sample of the chat he's, he's just sort of like mingling and he's staying near the body but as people are coming up he's just sort of like Thanking them for coming, for paying their last respects, that sort of thing. Is he referred to as father? Yeah. Father Grove? Yeah. Um, just, just wait here a second, Mr. McGee. Oh, oh, uh, uh, okay. I'll, I'll move my way um, with trepidation towards uh, Father Grove because. I don't know. Well, um, Oscar's not really sure whether he fears the undead rising or the dead rising again, or this this early priest with a with a hook. So he'll uh, um, approach with a with a, uh, a strange smile, <laughs> nervous smile on his face. Um, uh, uh, Father, could, uh, could perhaps we could, could could you spare us um, uh, some some time when when you have a moment um, oh, and just. Uh, oh, it's so over there. He, he extracts himself like gently and with courtesy from the conversation he's involved in. He says, uh, 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 "Of course, of course, um, of course, my son. Um, what is it that's troubling you? Have you have you come to 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 pay your respects to the uh, to, to the late yeah. uh, Miss Bennett?" No, yes, yes, um, uh, yes, um. yes. Yes, uh, <clears throat> a, a terrible, a terrible shame, all that. I know she she was long lived, but it's it's always a shame when a a font of uh, wisdom and knowledge, such as Miss Bennett, uh, passes away. Uh, heaven's gain is our loss. 
well, you, you, you know me and uh, a couple of a couple of friends, and I'll just point them out. A couple of the, the other men went over to Castlemaine the, 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 the last uh, last week. I I did hear something about the the affair. Yes, so, so some sort of a dreadful creature, wasn't it? Uh, I I'd, I'd heard the reports of the. The, the settlement is now little more than ruins, uh, which is a, a sad state of affair. I was actually speaking to the uh, the, the village headsman about whether uh, whether w once it's been cleared and is safe, of course, whether we could perhaps uh, go over there and say some prayers for the the people who tragically lost their lives in a uh, in Castlemaine. Um, yeah, well, uh, um, that's what I was going to mention. Uh, we, we, we came back with a gentleman. Just uh, um, get over there by by the door. Oh, oh yes, um, the, the the nervous looking fellow. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, nervous for a good reason apparently. Uh, well, if he is to be believed, and that's what I wish to speak to you about. Um, oh, well, in private. Uh, well, well, yes. Sir. Well, 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 where would you like to? Where would you like to talk? I so I'm always, I'm always available and happy to speak to any members of the community about whatever troubles them. Perhaps uh, somewhere a little more private and um, okay. later around lunchtime. I, I need to yes, speak yes, to the, the gentleman as well. Oh, well, yes, of course. Um, he, he he basically points to a spot on the edge of the village and he said, well, well, why do we meet over there by by that tree? Like you say, around about lunchtime, and then you can, you can talk to me about whatever it is that's uh, causing you such distress, my son. <laughs> yes, OK. I'll, I'll look over at the... The dead woman with nervousness as well he, he he sort of he sees you look over at a nervous he, he obviously like mistakes it for you know like sadness that this uh that this woman has died and he sort of very very gently he sort of like puts his like actual hand on your uh, on your shoulder and like a sort of okay. he gives your shoulder just like a, a gentle squeeze and he's Freeze like, rigid yeah he just, he just like gives your shoulder like a gentle squeeze and he's like uh he's like there's no need you're worrying about her, Miss Bennett. Do, do you credit my son? But there's, there's no need to worry about it. She's a, she lived a good long life, and she will be with the angels now. And then he obviously like takes his hand away. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Right. Um. But until, <sighs> until lunchtime, then, my son. Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you. Oh, Bow and nod and. <laughs> move my way away and he, he turns and goes back to like chit chatting to the villagers and doing his thing alright okay I'll uh, head over collect Mr McGee and then head over to uh, to John Cameron if he's there is an Oscar oh we may have a problem oh yeah what kind of problem um, a walking dead problem. <laughs> walking dead problem. <laughs> okay, at which, at which point, uh, John Cameron, can you please roll me a d6? Oh no, <laughs> you're all right, just don't get a one, you'll be fine. When has that ever happened, John? <laughs> there you go. So, 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 despite like as you say, it, John Cameron being like an undead problem. Like, everyone else is too busy, like, chatting amongst themselves, and, you know, a bit of village gossip, and, you know, like, oh, dearly departed and all that sort of thing. So they don't overhear that. And you, to be honest, Oscar, you've been, like, steering him away while you were, like, saying this. <laughs> So you'd sort of, like, just got him outside. And so he's like, oh, walking in, no problem. <laughs> but, yeah, no no one's overheard you. It's fine. Shush. Oh, um, <laughs> Uh, Mr. McGee was was telling us, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let him explain to you. I'll I'll, I'll go and find uh, uh, Vimar. I'll go find Vimar. Okay, so, so, I'll so, leave them till they're bought back in for. Yeah, so, so you so you go back in to get Weimar. Um Whilst whilst uh, like you quickly get Weimar and rejoin really John outside. Uh, McGee, Horatio McGee has like reiterated what he just told to Oscar, to you, John Cameron. Okay. And tell me, these undead, walking dead. The one now? <laughs> yeah, walking dead. Um, and I, they... I make the like, walking motions. Like... Uh, 
Um, did they attack anyone before they left, or did um, they just up and leave? Well, they, 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 they didn't seem to be attacking anyone at first, but then, I, I, as I was telling you, uh, w w one of the villagers tried to sort of got in their way and tried to stop them leaving the village and they they slew him and then he he got up off the floor and ca joined them and carried on heading north the, 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 the three of them left, left the village and uh, n none of us dared follow i mean we we watched them heading north until we uh till we lost sight of them in in the um in, in the whale song forest uh, but um we, we didn't dare follow them um we, we, we thought it'd be an ill omen and okay. he, sort of, he looks a bit wistful and sad as he's obviously thinking about the fate of his village and he's like, maybe we were right. Uh, indeed, maybe. And we should definitely look to make sure that New Zealand doesn't follow Castle Maine into the, the current state of ruin. Um, I've arranged to have a meeting with, uh, with Father at lunchtime. I think the, the three of us, four of us, should be uh, should be there. So I'll um, drag the two boys aside and leave Horatio McGee kind of there for a second, and just um, yeah, he stood there sure on his own. So what? Are we sure this guy is not mad? Um, with his talk of walking dead, um, should we really be telling people that we believe in such a thing? He looks genuinely scared to me, and yeah, so people, this people, thing's some weird shit. People see some some things uh, when they experience really bad things, like you would have in Castlemaine. Uh, could be in his head. Now I don't know. I, I'm not really your sage to know about these things, but what I do know is. Uh, when you see let's say things go wrong as they do uh, when things like the the bear creature comes up, starts clawing people down, eating them in front of you there, there's a good chance that uh, you're not going to be okay afterwards. It's just the way we're built. Like it's but I, I don't know. I'll, I'll like I've seen things, heard things like this before uh, from people who saw things they couldn't handle, and that's that's fine. And we should probably give him a place to stay here, uh, where he feels safe <laughs> at the very least. But. Um, what, what do you think the father is going to have to say about this? I think he may have some more pertinent questions. Right. Hopefully he, he should know some, some scripture things about it. I don't yeah, know. Well, that, that would be the sagely thing that I am not versed in. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Uh, just take that into consideration. Might be he's just broken. Uh, it, it's not unusual. Like I've seen some stuff, and occasionally I can't sleep. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I guess the father will tell us what to do. Though I don't know, like, what, what's the recipe gonna be? Um, are we going to find I don't know wolfsbane, uh, garlic, put it in with uh, with the coffin i don't <laughs> what what do you do when you, when you're trying to not have a, 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 a walking dead is it okay. i think you burn the bodies yeah that, that's what that's what that'll he do suggested it. that'll do it <clears throat> i'll go chop oh. some wood while we wait <laughs> <laughs> i can do that much i don't know if it's we're going to use it anyway, so yeah. So he like gets his hand axe out and he goes to find the the wood pile. Yeah, that's fine. You're like chopping wood. Yeah. No, no one 
thinks anything of it because I just yeah. like, oh great, some <laughs> chopped wood. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like cracking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so is the plan, guys? You're going to wait until lunchtime and then speak to uh, Father Grove? Or is there anything else yeah. you want to do before that meeting? No, I'll just have Weimar chopping wood while we wait. Okay, no problems. So we get round to lunchtime and Father Grove is waiting by the, the tree that was designated as the meeting point. You see there he's got like his little like, holy book tucked under one arm. Oh, okay. Um, shall, shall I shall I lead the conversation? Uh, chaps. Yes. You are them wisest of us. <laughs> oh, oh dear, we're doomed then. Uh, okay. Um, okay then. <clears throat> there goes. <clears throat> I'll steal myself. <clears throat> uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, lunchtime, Father. Good, good afternoon to you, my son. Uh, you said earlier that you wanted to talk to me about, so you wanted to unburden yourself of something. How can I help you? Um, <laughs> look at the others. Um, Tell them. What what does it what does it say in your book about um, um, uh... things that shouldn't be moving anymore? <laughs> <laughs> things that it, have it lo- passed it looks on. Little, it looks a little puzzled, and he's like. I'm sorry, my son. I, I, I don't think I quite follow you. I, I, I give him the motion of like dead, and then he says, uh, "Well, uh, it's not a question I I get asked very often, but uh, that there are there are ancient tales about uh, the in the the old days in a uh, Valcon, and he sort of gestures with his holy books." And, around at the landscape but, but before our people had to leave when uh, those who those who dabbled in forbidden arts misused their talents uh, but before the, the great ice age had been brought onto Valcon there are tales that there were people who wielded mighty and blasphemous sorcery that, that was capable of such things and uh, Obviously, there are cautionary tales of people who, through debauched or evil behaviour, open themselves up to possession by certain malevolent and devilish spirits. Uh, We believe that Castle Maine has fallen to such a fate. Um... And we are concerned. It, it, it that, looks genuinely shocked. Um, we are concerned that Harriet may also um, suffer the same fate. Um, uh, and we well, believe that. I, I, I'm sorry if I seem a, a little incredulous, my son, but um, all, all of all of the tales and the the legends I've just told you about are are old parables and. Uh, or old tales from from our holy books. Uh, I've I've never actually heard the like of anything happening from any any reliable source within my living memory. Yes, but we are only newly arrived, Father, and this land is not like any other. Um, uh, that, that, that we ourselves we ourselves have seen a bear that spoke with a human voice. Um, and wore a skull on the outside of its skin. I was um, a good time. That, that was that was bad. This this is this is not a land like any other. Um, he says, I, and, "I'm I'm sure, I'm sure you were right, my son. After all, uh, I I shudder to think what uh, what uh, blasphemies and vile perversions of nature still roam this land." Uh, as payment for the for the hubris of our our ancient forebears uh, dabbling in these uh, these these devil sent sorceries uh, all those years ago 
Um, and tell me, Father, would you see fit to see Harriet um, what's the word? Oh my god. Cremated. That's the word. <laughs> Cremated. <clears throat> he he, he looks shocked and he says, says my son, whilst I am um, I'm willing to accept that this is a strange new land uh, we, we, we cannot cremate the body of uh, poor Miss Bennett. After all, if if she if she has no body, how will when we all rise again at the end of days? How will she how will she step into into the light of the angels? And tell me, how much worse would she be if she rose tomorrow? Well, it, it, it is not for me to to, to say such things, um, my sir. I am I am quite happy to, to to take precautions and to to have the body watched. But uh, I I cannot sanction uh, desecrating the, the the body by um, scourging it with fire. Normally we. We, we do so only under the direst of circumstances when uh, they're, they're and, uh, and I, I already know what you're going to say to this my son so please forgive me but anyway when there is like an infection or a clear danger to those still living and I I appreciate that you were saying that if she does indeed rise again she may be a danger to the, the living but I, I cannot de desecrate her, her remains but based on such fanciful tales and, and please please do not think that I, I believe you are intentionally trying to deceive me it's just I, I cannot go to the other villagers with, with such a fantastical tale and say that because of this we need to we need to have our body consumed by fire yeah well, we need proof well, we must wait then and watch her and uh ready okay so what's the plan guys so it's about lunchtime now john is it yeah just a little bit <laughs> just a, bit, a little bit after lunchtime. Lunch, yeah. okay so and we, from mcgee's story we believe that they rose kind of around midnight time in the middle he, of the he, night he, or? he said as he said as soon as it got dark oh as soon as it got dark okay um and I'm guessing it gets dark summer-ish, right? So it gets dark about 8 o'clock? Yep. Okay. So I think I would like to spend the day hunting, trying to build up our uh, food stores, and then we should watch where the body is as darkness settles um, and try and uh, see what happens. And then I guess amongst ourselves, we should decide whether... If McGee is right and if she does rise, are we going to try and do something about it, or are we just going to follow her and see where she goes, knowing that there may be multiple creatures? That's, in, that's an interesting idea. Hmm. Okay, so in terms of your hunting, if you're spending the day hunting, roll me a d6, John. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I find anything except on a six. Okay. Check. Yeah, for tracking, isn't it? The... So whilst Rob's looking that up, what are the re the rest of you doing during the day? <clears throat> I was uh, popping in and out her, looking at, at her. Does she have any relatives? She doesn't appear to have any living yeah. relatives, no. Right, okay. Well, there probably someone around at all times, hopefully. If not, then I'll fill in the gaps when they're out. Yeah, that's absolutely right. 
there, there will be a few periods when there's like people not there and you sort of keep an eye on the place and when you notice that it's the, the hut's empty mm. you sort of like scoot in and obviously if anyone yeah. if anyone asks just they're paying your last respects no one thinks anything weird about that absolutely <laughs> okay so I bet you saw one more Yes, I could hunt as well, and I am a hunter by profession. Okay, roll me a d6. A6. Okay, so unfortunately you have not managed to hunt anything this day. Um, so I did find, I find that on a five, a five or six chance of finding prey, but it doesn't seem to say how that turns into... Okay, let me have a quick look then. Okay, so Rom, another D6, Rob. Yeah, four. Okay, so you managed to hunt and kill an animal that provides, basically provide like four rations worth of food. Okay. And can I skin it as well? Is there a roll for that, or do we just assume I get the yeah, skin? Yeah, you, you can have the skin, that's fine. Okay. I, I'm assuming if you've got enough expertise to hunt it and kill it, you can skin it. Okay. Okay, so we're getting, we're getting to around about quarter to eight in the evening. The, the light of the day has just started to dim a little bit. The temperature has started to drop noticeably as obviously the sun's setting beyond the horizon. You notice like, the, the few people about in the village, most people are sort of starting to like settle in for the evening because there's no point being out and about and trying to do much when it's so cold. The few people who you do see about, you notice they've got like more furs on and more sort of like hard wearing clothes. But Gradually, as you watch, you start to see like candles and sort of lanterns, etc., sort of be kindled in the the windows of the various like sort of five big huts that make up the the village of um, New Seal Land. Obviously, there's no uh, there's no light in the sort of small, sort of serviceable like, wooden hut that uh, Miss Bennett's body has been placed in. As it starts getting dark, where are you guys going to sort of situate yourself? Um, does the the hut that she's in have a flat roof? No, it has a, It has like a. And a roof. Okay. Um. Does it have like a porch? No. No. Okay. Um. It's it's basically just like a small wooden hut with like a sort of thatched roof. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. So I don't really want to spend hours on the next roof. So I guess I kind of want to kind of hide at the side, kind of fully expecting her to walk out. I don't want to be in her line of sight, but okay. I want to be nearby so I can get behind her. So I'm kind of just at the side. Yeah, so of... tucking yourself into the side of the hut. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, how about yourself, Oscar? Where are you going to be stationed? I'll be inside the house, like inside the hut. Okay. Why in not? a corner. Some shadows. Nice. One more. Yes, I'm outside with a fire. Okay, that's absolutely fine. You you built a small fire. Oh, yeah, just a just a fire. Uh, nothing fancy. Okay, so now where are you going to? Where are you going to have like Mister McGee? Because he's like he's like very not keen on being near the building at all, but he seems to be he seems to be like wanting to stick near you, perhaps because like you guys rescued him once before, so he feels a bit safer around you guys. So what, he's welcome what? to have. Uh, I guess we're doing some like root brew. I guess that would be yeah. the thing that we brew here from the local stuff. So. That would be the thing that I'm doing out there all night, um, just to, to have something warm. So yeah, you, know, you get your like, pine tea or like your root tea yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, Horatio McGee will be quite happy. So like, obviously he's got furs on as well, but he's quite happy. So like, warming his hands by yeah. the fire and like just making general chit chat to you. Yeah. As you know, you know, so as he's talking, he keeps like nervously glancing at the hot like 
especially and then like looking up and especially as it gets dark like it's like glances are getting like more frequent okay so as the only one inside the building oscar you're you're in there when the the last few fleeting rays of daylight disappear and darkness shrouds the village of new zealand the temperature is now extremely cold and the wind whistles through the sort of small gaps in the planks that make up the make up the the walls of the various huts you can know, like sort of whistling as bits of wind come in and then you hear a you hear a slight sort of creaking sound or a shifting sound and out the corner of your eye you think for a moment you see like the furs covering Miss Bennett twitch slightly but it's just out the corner of your eye and when you look around at it there's no further movement holding my breath you wait for a few minutes then suddenly Miss Bennett just like folds at the waist and sits up her eyes are just staring directly in front of herself and then slowly as the, with like no real sense of coordination rather like a, a marionette puppet where someone had just grabbed a fistful of the strings and pulled it upright she starts rising to her feet the gravity causing the the furs to just fall off her and you can see the remnants of like a, a sort of night clothes that she died in but she seems to have no care for the furs as they just fall off her or, or no sense of the cold her mouth sort of hangs open her eyes stare vacantly in front of her she she spins around almost with a sort of lurching motion as though drunk or relieved of her senses as though sort of like looking for something and then she seems to sort of snap to face a particular point which you know to be north you don't know exactly what she's staring at but she's obviously facing north and then it's as though like some sort of like magnetic pull was exerted on her and she start she slowly and uncoordinately starts sort of staggering out of the the open door of this small building obviously John, you hear like the sort of lurching footfalls and the soft like in the snow as she lurches outside. You all hear a uh, Mr. Uh, your unfortunately rescued a uh, fellow. You see Mr. McGee's and you're like, ah! as he turns around and sees her lurching out. Why I'm obviously in the flickering firelight, you see this vacant, slack-jawed, still pallid with the, the graying pallor of death, this shambling figure, its bare feet dragging through the snow, seeming to feel no impact from the biting cold that you're only really comfortable in because of the, the warm embrace of your fire. This creature whatever it might be seems to care nothing for it it staggers and lurches out of the building and then again it, although it as though it perhaps hears a call or is attracted in some way it wheels around rather drunkenly until it's facing north and then starts shuffling towards the outskirts of the village heading north seeming not to, i mean it sways around and like must have seen you by the fire but it doesn't seem to care. All it seems to be bothered with is going north. How do you all react? Obviously, you, you all know this is going on. What do we do? I don't know. Call the priest. Uh, Where's the priest? Why do I say uh, I'll appear in the doorway. I'm following it. Huh? Sorry. Huh? Yeah, as, as you look out the door, you can see, and I mean, it's only like maybe 10 feet away from you, Oscar, because it's like moving so slowly and with such a lack of coordination. It's one of those like three steps forward, two steps back 
sort of job is because <laughs> it's like swaying and lurching about as it's moving so it's only really sort of taking very slow footfalls but its pace never changes it never falters it just keeps heading north doesn't matter if it goes through snow um, it treads on you see it tread on a couple of like sharp stones sticking out of the snow which you know would have been quite painful that doesn't seem to deter it it just keeps going at this sort of steady but slow methodical lurching pace okay uh, I can go get the priest if you have torches I should suggest you light them up uh, with... yeah I can definitely light a torch yeah. off the fire. Yeah, that helps. So I'll I'll get a, a log from my fire and uh, I'll I'll go to the priest's house. Okay. Just to let you guys know, it, it probably isn't relevant in this scene, but for future, a yeah. standard torch burns for about an hour, which is six non-combat turns because non-combat turns are like ten minutes each. But it's probably not going to be valid in this career, effectively like real timing it. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, you just like you, you grab a torch and light it in the fire, not a problem. So, um, so what I'd like to try and do, John, is with my rope, try and turn it into a lasso. Okay. And try and rope Harriet, and then with Oscar, hopefully helping. Uh, I want to try and pull her back and stop her going anywhere, but okay. stay whatever the 40-odd foot that we would be away from her, away from her. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so what I'm going to ask you to do is can you make me a ranged attack roll? Obviously, don't worry about the damage. This is just to see if you can like loop her with the, the lasso. Uh, 11. Yeah, that's fine. You... you, you obviously, you've... You've not got a great deal of time because you'll be getting out of range. So you quickly like knot it together, swing it round, throw it. It goes over her head. She doesn't seem to pay it any mind whatsoever. Go slips down to her waist. At which point you obviously like pull it to tighten it. And as you say, presumably both you and Oscar have like grabbed hold of it. You you don't find stopping her progress very difficult at all because there's two of you, and she's moving fairly slowly. She car she doesn't show any sign of realizing that she's now tethered and just carries on sort of like trying to plod forward but with you guys holding her back effectively she's just sort of like shambling on the spot with this this rope connecting you to her hey. okay um, so we could just hold on and wait for the priest then you were going to get yep. the priest why am i yeah okay so as you head over to the one of the sort of large huts that the priest lives in you actually see sort of like he's already coming out of the door perhaps having heard the the scream from Horatio and this is clear out the door he's like oh, what, 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 what's all the commotion about it's it's one of those legends uh, come this way at which point he looks past you and he, he sees obviously that the lasso and the, the lasso zombie and you two are down to it. And he's like, oh, saint, saints preserve us. And he, he, go, he goes with you, Ymar. I don't know that they will, but I do have fire. Um, uh, but uh, when we get close enough, I will just hand him the burning log. I'll get, I'll get another one from the fire. Yeah, he, he, takes, he takes the torch off you. You're all torched up. Yeah. You see, like, um, as you get like a bit closer to this this zombified figure, it doesn't seem to show any signs of like noticing your presence, it. even. Yeah, it's completely oblivious to everything except the north. Yeah, it, it's it's just sort of like trying to shamble forward with it with this rope. As you follow the rope back, you can see like John and Oscar like holding on to this rope, so sort of, like keeping her in the spot effectively. You see the priest sort of like moves in a bit closer and he's like, he's looking at him and he's like, oh, dear Lord, this, 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 yeah. is, this is an, an unholy thing. If only somebody could have warned you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to say that, John. <laughs> he says, he says my, my son now is, now is not the place for such recriminations. 
it's just a, my my only concern is re returning this this poor good woman and he gestures at uh, the zombie to, to, to a rightful rest and he, he he sort of he pulls out like obviously like a, a pocket prayer book effectively and he immediately starts sort of reciting a number of prayers from it which after a couple of minutes it becomes obvious isn't really doing anything <laughs> You know, he's there and he's like, And the Lord saith that thou shalt lie down and receive thy rest and thy just reward and be rewarded by his angels in heaven. And he's like moving around, sort of doing all of this and making various sort of holy signs. And like I say, after a couple of minutes, it becomes obvious that's not doing anything. But that doesn't seem to be deterring him. He's still like, And the Lord saith. Is there a tick tree in town that we can tie the rope to? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, there's plenty of her trees, end. Man. Okay, so just tie it off so she can't go anywhere. Yeah, um, And then I guess we should all get together and decide what to do about this. Yeah, let's consider the options. Uh, you, you mentioned letting her go and, and, and uh, following her. Uh, there's obviously some reason why she's heading north other than She'd be in the sea if she went south, I suppose. Yeah. Um, my my sense is that we shouldn't follow her in the dark. That that would be unwise. Um. So maybe we just wait until tomorrow, and then we can release her and see where she goes. Um. Or we could try and put her out of her misery, and burn what's left of the body. Uh, at which point you hear a loud cry as the the, the priest, uh, Father Grove, has been sort of like circling around to her, sort of like saying these prayers. And as he gets to the point where he's in front of this creature, it suddenly lunges forward. It's still on the rope, but obviously there's a bit of give to rope. It suddenly lunges forward by like only a few inches and it like rakes its hands sort of down the father's torso you see him fall back into the snow sort of letting out this gurgled scream and you can just see like in a sort of gangs of new york style you can see some like him lying on the snow with this like pool of red spreading out around him so he's like <coughs> great his, his prayer book falls with a soft like into the snow next to him, you see like the red puddle spreading towards it in okay. that cinematic slow mo. Um, so, I guess what I want to do then is try and get to him and get him and his book out of the reach of this creature. Yeah, the strange thing is, is you notice like as he as it rakes him, and he sort of like goes, oh, and falls to one side in the snow. Like literally, as soon as he's not in front of the zombie anymore. It, it could not care less about him. It just like okay. goes back to like ignoring his entire presence and carries okay. on like trying to shamble forward, which obviously it can't because of the rope. But yeah, you, you run across, you like grab him sort of under the arms and like grab it, grab his book. You've got hold of him. The, the zombie doesn't seem to care. Okay, and is he dead? Yeah. Okay. Then suddenly okay. you feel his body twitch oh, in your okay. arms. As, as he sort of like you basically like I say you've got your hands under his arms and you're sort of dragging him back with his legs training in the snow then suddenly his body goes like almost like a, a sort of galvanic shock had run through his body and you feel it this sort of like twitch go through his body as you're sort of holding him how do you respond uh, I kind of troll his body away because I remember McGee saying that people killed by these creatures also rise. Yeah, you basically sort of throw him away from yourself and he lands face down in the snow. Then again, suddenly just like lurches upright to his feet. You still see the wound, like still like leaking blood and fluids on his chest. His eyes are staring, his face is still in the expression of like horror he was wearing when he died. And he starts like again in this strange jerky uncoordinated movement starts sort of shambling in the same direction that the the first zombie is facing uh, if John I get my bow out yep. and just take all the time in the world uh, can I shoot the father in the head 
yeah, I'm going to say that you don't even have to make an attack roll because, like I said, he's ignoring you. You could yeah. literally walk up right behind him and be like, Bleh. yeah, yeah, that, that, that was the idea. Like, go yeah. like in a straight line with him walking, just yeah, just roll your damage. The idea being, I, I want to hit the spine because I don't know what these things are, but I know that if, if they're a person, hitting the spine is going to be very bad for them. So, uh, okay, here goes. Uh, where's the. Oh. Oh uh, no, that's the. Here we go. Three damage. Okay, so you you put an arrow into his back. It doesn't seem with with that sort of like low damage roll. It doesn't seem to have like penetrated his spine. It does sort of like cause him to like throw his balance off a little bit, but he carries on sort of shambling forward without even trying to like right himself. Yeah. Second arrow. Yeah. Just see same, what happens. Same again. Fine. Okay, this time the arrow like hits his spine dead on, and you like actually hear a snap as the arrow goes into yeah. his back and it goes in deep. At which point he falls to the ground. You can see that his like legs now appear to be useless, but you can see that like even now he's it's like still pulling himself like forward very slowly. Although you can see that like a lot of like the motive power, let's call it, yeah. has gone out of this creature. It's like I I hand my longbow to if um McGee is around. I'll sort of off the bow to him. It's like you you take care of that now. And I'll get um I'll get my short sword out. Okay. And... McGee sort of like he, shaking at first but he's obviously you can tell from as he takes it off he's handled the bow before you see him like he tries to like, get himself together and he's like yeah let, let, lets it go um an arrow sinks into the back of the head of the priest and the head just like slumps forward into the snow okay i, I put the sword sword back into scabbard so huh what wait <sighs> we could, we, okay we no, could use him no, that that was that was the thing I was going to try next. Um, <laughs> Obviously, the, the 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 zombie of like Miss Bennett's still there, like attached to its robe. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So, do we burn the body now? And I sort of point at the corpse of the father. Um, I think if we're going to use the firewood, we should burn both bodies. Um, what I was thinking is we might have her nod towards um, our first and have her cut loose at dawn. See where she goes. Okay, as you're as you're doing this, you, you suddenly hear a, a loud bellicose voice from like one of the other buildings. So, uh, oh my God, H Harriet, you're alive! And you see a like quite a burly sort of like, strapping man who you all know to be Homer McKay, who is like the sort of gunsmith of mm -hmm. New Zealand. And he's obviously like heard the commotion, come out, seen uh, seen Harriet Bennett like with the rope around, they're sort of trying to move. And in the sort of like the low light and the sort of flickering shadows, he's like, "Oh my God, she wasn't dead. She's alive." And he's walking across, and he's like, "Oh, saints be preserved, me, Harriet. I thought you Draw were the sword. Draw the sword. Keep back. Like, like hold it up to him. It's like, no. <laughs> we, we have a situation. You, you hold it up to him, and he's like, there, 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 there's, "There's no need for hostilities uh, on such a no, joyous occasion as this, Mister Longgrove." No, no, it's not joyous, and I sort of motion with my non-sword hand at the the priest corpse oh my god so someone's killed father grove yeah and then, then he looks around and he sees uh he sees your man mcgee holding this like bow and arrow like he's like at which point uh he's like homer mckay's and like oh my god everyone wake up the newcomers killed the killed the priest he starts shouting at which point you hear like murmured voices from all the buildings around. So like people are, like, what's that? What's going on? Like, that's what I, I, I motion to McGee like, 
Put the fucking ball he, down. He, he, sort of like, <laughs> he, he just like drops it in the snow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still holding the gunsmith. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, sword, he, he still stood like with his hands up like that. Like, he, he needs to stay away. <laughs> so. Which point, like the, the other villagers, like all looking like very sleepy, have started to like come out the building. Like, What's going on? Someone's been saying that someone's killed the priest, and like a few people sort of like exclaim loud like, <gasps> as they see like the arrow riddled body of Father Grove like lying yeah. in the snow with his blood around it. I guess um, so. I will yeah. step forward <clears throat> and just say uh, with my musket, um, kind of pointed in their general direction, um, to say that Miss Bennett has risen from the dead, um, as some sort of uh, unhorrid creature. And that she slew the priest. Uh, Someone on the back of the crowd like, risen from the dead, poppycock! Uh, and I'll indicate that they should come around and look at her face <laughs> and see that she is not... Yeah. Um, the fingers probably as well. Because there yeah. was there was clawing. So. At, at yeah. which point a, f a few people do sort of like... I mean, you, you Obviously you tell them to like give a wide berth after what happened to the priest but a few people do move round to the front and when they see the sort of vacant stare and the the dishevelled unnatural pallor of uh, Harriet a few people are like oh, oh my, my lord like a couple of people look like visibly like they're about to be sick but uh, gradually the cries subside from like oh my god the newcomers murder the priest to, to, to sort of like the sheer like shock and horror of that they they can't deny the proof that you're showing them. I mean, they, they're like, oh rubbish! Uh, people rise from the dead, and you're like, here is a zombie. So, so <laughs> they, 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 they they literally you're like, we've roped it up for you specially. Here it is on display. So that they can't really deny that. But uh, obviously, they're all dealing with it in their own way. Like some people are just sort of like, don't know how to react. They they're just sort of like shocked. They're uh, they've never heard anything like this. Um, other people are like slightly more sort of keeping it together a bit more like oh what, what, what should we do I don't know, I don't know. I should, I've never seen anything like it just, well, well we probably can't just leave her like this rope to a tree and like that's the sort of general like hop up that's going around the gathered village and pretty soon like the entire village is like gathered and it's like even the people who didn't wake up initially like hear all these exclamations and the, like the general furore outside and sort of come out and see what's going on um so, well, I guess my, myself and <clears throat> Fireman and Oscar will kind of take a step aside and then, um, so, we think we should burn the priest's body and potentially release Miss Bennett in the morning and follow her during the day to see where she goes. Um, it might be useful to damage her leg so that she moves rather slowly. Well, we'll wait until we get out of the village first. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. We, we should follow her. Uh, we've got a few people are like, uh, oh, what, 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 what should we do, Josiah? What should we do? And they turn to Josiah Means. This sort of like, he's a bit older, but he's still quite muscular. He's uh, he's an older man with like a, a bushy grey beard. He's like the headsman of the village, and he says, uh, he says, well, now I. Uh, I obviously we, we can't leave her as she is, but I have I, I have no great expertise with whatever devilry this is. It seems to me that uh, and he, t he turns to the three of you. It it seems to me that uh, you've f far more experience with this sort of devilry than I. Uh, I mean, I, I mean no insult by that, but uh, what would you suggest we do? Um. I suggest that we burn the body of Father Grove. Um, you know, because like a few people are visibly again. disturbed by that idea. Hmm. Um, and I understand that uh, that's, uh, that upsets you. And it upset Father Grove when we suggested that we do it to Miss Bennett. Um, but there is no doubt that Father Grove would still be alive had he listened to us. Um, okay, uh, at this point... I'm going to ask, can you please roll me 2d6 and add your charisma modifier to it? Okay, so roll 2d6. Yeah. 
and a four. Okay, so uh, the the headsman J Josiah means is like, uh, well, I I see what you're saying, and it's it's hard to argue that obviously the, the good father has met a, a, a tragic end, but uh, surely there's there's got to be a there's got to be another way we could we we could lay him to rest rather than rather than burning his body. I mean, we only we only do that when there's like a plague and things. Think of this undead curse as a plague, and perhaps he would be more comfortable. Do, do we? Do, he sort of throws his hands open. He says, do, "Do we have any idea what 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 caused this? I mean, is this going to happen again, or is it, is this um, a, is this an isolated case? We it happened in Castle Maine. It has happened here. Um, it is our belief that something in the north calls these creatures to it." Um, and it is our intention to follow Miss Bennett tomorrow to find out what might be causing these scenes. Um, but these undead are potentially the undoing of Castle Maine, and we would hate to see them be the undoing of New Seal Land. Um, if you don't mind me asking, uh, obviously the, the the body of uh, Miss Bennett was was laying in the hut for for several score hours before this. Uh, do we have any idea how long it takes this to happen? And so what is that? Um, we believe it happens at dusk, the first day after the body is the the, the person passes. Um, but we know that if a person is killed by the creature, they rise immediately. It says as the father did. It says, "Might I?" Since I, I still can't countenance the idea of burning people uh, might I suggest a compromise uh, perhaps when uh, when uh, a person dies just to be on the safe side if we if we bind their their body with strong rope and we bury them deeper perhaps with a, a stone atop them or something similar would that suffice since it seems that this he, he doesn't even like have a word for it. It's this um, seems to be the, the rope that, that's been used seems to be effective. Perhaps if we if we bound the bodies of the dead before burial, that would prevent them from digging their way out. I suppose. Would would do you think that would work as a compromise? I, I mean, you, you can already see how the when you when you mention the mere idea of burning the bodies, how how the villagers took it i do not know enough about these creatures to know that that will work i i do not know how long this rope will you know keep miss bennett here Um, it may last all night you know it, she has been roped for all of 10 minutes um so you know it you know me and mine we are aware of the risk and we are very unlikely to be slain by such a creature but you and the townsfolk, you know, are not as experienced as we, and and there is a real risk that a creature of this nature, you know, if the father rose again tomorrow night, that he could kill many people, mm. and that those people could, would rise, and that they could kill more people. It's um, it's a good compromise for the time being, I think. Well, well what I suggest then is that we, uh, if we should have the misfortune for anyone else to to pass. That we bind their bodies, as I've said, and we perhaps place a guard over their grave for for the first three nights, say, to to make sure that they do not rise. How, how does that strike you? Yeah. And then perhaps if if that is not adequate, perhaps then we will. I will try and once again broach your suggestion to the uh, to the rest of the village. Because then, at least, I can say that we've we've tried other means before resorting to that. Yeah. Very well. As Oscar says, it's worth a try. Very well. And he turns around and he starts talking to the villagers, explaining that that's what they're going to do. And then he says, um, "What about?" Um, and he gestures at the zombie that's still alive. Um. 
I, we will leave her here for as long as possible. And, you know, we will follow her when daylight comes and see what evil calls to her. Um, very well, if you, if you think that's for the best. Uh, and he, he, at which point he, he, he nods and he starts turning to the village and he's basically trying to like calm them all down, saying everything's well in hand. You know, everyone should should go back to their beds, etc. And he's quite a persuasive fellow, obviously being like the headsman of the village. And he slowly starts sort of like calming people down and persuading them that there's nothing to be done now. You know, and everyone starts sort of slowly heading back to their beds. Or there's a few like rueful glances in the direction of the the father's corpse and the uh, the still sort of shambling on the spot figure of Miss Bennett. Do do we have any? Uh, really, really old people are um, quite ill people in the town at the moment. Well, um, Harriet Bennett was the oldest. Um, there, there's right. no, there's no like really, really old people. All right, and there's no nobody sort of like on the deathbeds. Yeah, there's no one there with like a hanky like. <laughs> Not at the minute, no. Okay, well, at least perhaps there may not be any more fatalities while we're away. Uh -huh. Well, I think I shall try and grab a little sleep and uh, be ready in the morning. That seems like a wise idea. Should we take turns keeping watch on her? Yes. Okay. I will watch her first if you guys want to get some sleep. All right. Okay. If anything goes wrong, I will fire my musket. <laughs> so if you as hear a musket, side. sorry, go on. Yeah, so if you hear a musket, come running quickly. All right. I was just wondering, as a an aside, John, yeah. um, but, um, <clears throat> how often or when will the next um, supply ship be arriving? Why vessel? What for your satellite? Oh. Yeah. There, there, there won't oh, be a is... supply vessel. Right. The, the, the idea is you were basically like a sort of boat of pilgrims looking to like make their way, their own way here. So the, the, oh, okay. there may be like other boats bringing pilgrims, or there's certainly probably like smugglers and pirates and the like. I mean, there might once there's more settlements, there might be some like more mercantile interests in the area, but currently there isn't. Right. Okay. Then. That answers that one. Okay. It was just something to do with my backstory that I was wondering about. But, uh, okay. okay, so since you guys are sort of all sort of like resting for the evening, I'm going to suggest that we take a five minute break there, guys. Use the facilities, refresh your drinks, etc. We'll come back in about five minutes and we'll pick up with the dawning of a new day. Okay, so back in five. Okay.
<clears throat> Shame about Father Isaiah. That was such a good priest name. Yeah. That's cool. I've, um, I've I've signed up to um, uh, cause I, I back um, Collins like Patreon. I've signed on to like a game he's running for like his uh, Patreon supporters, and it's the um, it's a guy running this sort of like OSR like um, Lovecraftian sort of game called Eldritch okay. Tales, and um, the guy who's running it it's just got like in touch with me and he's like. Oh hey, I saw you signed on for the um, the pit crew game. Just wanted to let you know ahead of time that I'm running the scenario you wrote for it. <laughs> <laughs> Quality. Nice. So, you, you watch the zombie throughout the night in various sort of different stages. It carries on shambling, doesn't get anywhere because of the rope. Um, which of you is on the last watch? Up to you. I went first, so it's one of the guys. Yeah, it'll be me then. I'll get the most. Okay, so Oscar, you're on the last watch, which means you're on watch as the sun starts to rise above the horizon and as the first rays of the sun fall upon the, the shambling body of Harriet Bennett, it falls to the ground once more, seeming to be an inert and very, very dead corpse. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll be, I'll be standing over her as, as um, John arrives. Yeah, so uh, as you as you've got the rest of you guys start arriving, you basically find the dead body of Harriet Bennett, rope still around its waist, attached to the tree, and Oscar's sort of stood like looking a bit puzzled, like over it, like looking down at it. Well, I might have a problem. <laughs> well, what did you do? <clears throat> well, me, it was 
that thing up there. Sunlight, apparently. Um, that sends it back to its um, uh, okay. inanimate state. I would suggest we do what we need to do during the day. But we watch the corpse until sundown. See what happens. Okay. Very useful information, I feel like. Um, so it seems likely then that both corpses will rise at dusk. I don't know. She is not damaged. So, mm. But I suggest we watch this. We, we do not, we change nothing. We wait until dusk. See what happens. Yeah. Or, okay. So, is there anything you, if that's the plan, is there anything you guys yeah. want to do during the day? Uh, I'll go hunting again if. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And the, um, the big idea being that during the day when someone else is doing the watch, um, I chop enough wood so that we can burn these corpses. Uh, okay. If. So uh becomes necessary. So yeah, during the day a few people have come up and they've they've sort of asked about Father Grove's body because obviously they don't just want to like leave him face down in the snow with like arrows sticking out of him. Yeah. But since they they've all seen the sort of uh, the headsman of the village sort of like deferring to you guys when during the, the situation last night, they're sort of a bit like can can we move his body? Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna be like if it doesn't move after sundown, then yes, we're going to burn it, and you're going to help me carry it over there. So you say until then, we don't. Do you? Okay. So just wait until sundown. We'll figure it out. Okay. What, what, no what? one touches anything until sundown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, one of them starts to be like, oh, can we? and you're like, ah. <laughs> 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 Okay. We need to know how this thing works. Otherwise, we'll we'll die. <laughs> okay, now obviously, um, John's been out hunting. However, Oscar and Weimar, you've pretty much had like a full day of rest. So yeah. if you're down any hit points, you can heal like 1d3 hit points. I think I might be. Because um... you only get that if you have like a complete day of rest. Oh, yeah, well, I'm one down, so I'll just heal that. Yeah, boom, boom. <laughs> right. Because if, cause effectively, like, I'm not counting the chopping of the wood because you don't really gain any tangible benefit from that. It's just like a flavor thing. Yeah, I'm not doing that eight hours. Um... Yeah. Because but, but, basically, you guys have just been chilling and being like, don't touch our body. It's like hands off the court. Yeah, that's I can't pretty, believe I need to see you, it. You but. guys have just been like sort of shacked up next to the body's been like, leave it. <laughs> like, there's that one guy who's like inching closer, like pretending not to look. Just gonna pull, pull one of those out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so later on that evening, well, it starts to get dark, and as the last rays of sunlight disappear behind the horizon the body of Harriet Bennett jerks upright and again begins its to shamble northwards restrained by the rain obviously the body of Father Azriah Grove does not rise suggestion we burn um, Grove's body And then we try and see where Harriet would go. Uh, take the rope, still attached to her, follow her, see what happens. Uh, not to get like lost in the woods or anything, but just see like the rough, like where where she's going. If we keep the rope, then we won't lose her in the dark. Yeah, it's very true. And you know from your previous experience that. She doesn't even seem to be like cognizant of the fact that she's got the rope around her. As long, it basically seems from your observation, as long as like nothing directly gets in front of her, not bothered. Because as soon as, like, say, with with Father Grove, as soon as he fell to one side, it was just like it didn't exist anymore. 
Yeah, no object permanence at all. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It was just like, ah, oh, I've killed you. So what? Yeah, no distractions anymore. So that's good. So yeah, I'll I'll um I'll, I'll like talk to uh, a couple of the, the villagers. Like, let's, let's get the fire going for uh for Grove. Okay. At this point, can you roll two d six and add your charisma modifier? Moi. Yeah. Because you're trying to pursue, because they've got yeah. this deep-rooted religious belief that like you shouldn't desecrate or like yeah. burn a body, and you're like, come yeah. on, guys. Yeah, I wasn't aware that I was asking, but let's see how. <laughs> <it's done. laughs> well, well, you're sort of saying, come on, guys, let's, yeah. let's get this dealt with, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, so. Uh, I'm trying to puzzle out the sheet here. Um, well, I was going to say, do I, have... I just type it in, just do this 2d6 plus whatever your charisma modifier Yeah, is. yeah, that, the, the, the plus part is the one that's uh, throwing me off because there's no um, place for that. Though I know that I have some shit going on here. And is the, the plus that you're referring to uh, the NPC reactions value by chance? Boom, 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 boom. Or is that a separate thing? Because I have seven, but there's no place on the sheet where the modifier bit would go i'll tell you what just um just do me a straight charisma roll so just click on charisma not probably easy okay let's see oh yeah it's probably baked in right that's that's yeah, why it yeah. doesn't show it yeah okay okay so it's it's it doesn't seem to have a modifier it's just rolling against uh, the value itself. yeah it, it, it's it's a standard like old school um yeah test that's yeah. why they've not okay. put the modifiers on. Because yeah. they, they didn't really matter a great deal in that old school yeah. design, just to be honest. Okay, if so... your loyalty score is 7, you have no modifier. So it's just a straight 2D okay. six. Okay, yeah, well then the, the, the yeah, it's fine. thing works. Uh, okay, so you, you're like, come on, let's get the fire, let's get Father Grove on it. And then like, they're like, look, well, we, well, we appreciate what you're saying, but we... We, 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 we can't burn his body surely I mean we, 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 we've, we've seen the evidence he's the night has fallen he's not he's not risen can, can we not at least give the poor man a burial I mean we've not even taken the arrows out of his body you're Let's take the arrows out okay while well, he's taking the arrows out yeah you saw it he again about how comfortable you are having an actual dead man that walked just then. Right there as our neighbor, albeit underground a little bit. Do you think that's a good idea? Okay, give us another charisma roll. Okay. Since you're making a very valid point, I'll let you Yeah, it. I guess. <laughs> uh... Oh, it's not. Oh, there we go. Uh, uh, getting there, getting there slowly. Yeah. A couple more tries. <laughs> that the, 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 you you basically you're slowly sort of talking them around, but they're still like that. They've gone from being just like, no, we can't do this, to being like, oh, mm -hmm. isn't that isn't there any other way we can we we, we can do this other than but burning the body? Okay. Um, I'm not trying to be difficult here, right? I'm very conscious of the fact that she, I pointed at Harriet, scratched him, pointed at the father. I like to imagine just as you're doing that, Oscar's <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get ready to shove it back in if, if it moves. Less than 10 heartbeats, he was up again and off to the woods, like she, like she is now. If we're having, let's say, the uh, solstice. We're having solstice. Someone gets the scratch, whatever that is, less than 10 heartbeats to get the next one to be that way. I'll point at Harriet again. I'm not your engineer, right? I'm not a sapper. I don't do the big numbers, but there's not a lot of us here. And if we lose half or all of us, 
to whatever this horrific thing is because it happens just like this like you don't i could take longer with my sword to kill us all than this just did uh or could i guess so i'm just being very conscious of the fact that we're look we're basically sitting on or would be if we put him in the ground we're sitting on a thing that could kill us in a like less time than it would take for me to i don't know eat a rabbit and that makes me slightly nervous okay <laughs> at which point the josiah means the headsman of the village steps up and he says listen i know this is this is unpleasant i can't claim to to, to like this myself but like many of you, uh, I have a, I have a wife here. We we hope to have children here. I'm, I'm sure the father, were were he still with us, would understand us taking all necessary means to protect our families and this settlement as a whole. But should there be a, should there be a stain of sin on anyone for this, for this necessary act? I would not see it fall on anyone else, since I am the, I, I am the the headsman of this village. I will take the I will take the body of the father, and I will, I will burn it. No, 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 no. I, no, you're the headsman. That's right. However, it's I'm not putting this on you. Uh, so you're you're saying this. I'm saying it as well. If <laughs> if we can still be friends or at least live together here i'm willing to take care of this thing for us all and if that's a, a sin or if you decide that i'm not welcome in your house to hold your kid or whatever that is okay by me because this is the thing that i think we need to do so Okay. Um, uh, is it uh, John? Uh, are they? What's the sort of very quick read on the crowd? Like, are they going in with the with more like, oh, the scriptures tell us not to do this, or are they more like, like he was our friend? Like we don't, <laughs> we don't want to we want to mutilate our friend's body. Yeah, like, they. Are, are they secular or, or more like religious it, it, it seems to be more uh, a religious thing oh, okay. um, but but um with yourself and the the headsmen sort of both like discussing this openly in front of them they're slowly starting to accept especially with him saying like and you saying like look this is a danger to your family this this is how little time it takes for this to like spread and affect more people they're slowly sort of coming around to it i mean they, they don't like it but yeah. they're, they're starting to accept the necessity of it so well there, there was there was provision in the book for the situations of um, uh, plague and uh, disease and i think this is one of those cases okay make me a charisma roll oscar uh, yeah also just charisma. to note it I'm, I'm not trying to like go around these failed roles i'm just like no no this, it's fine this, this I'm, I'm just banging on <laughs> yeah no, the, the the roles are literally there just to give me an idea of yeah. how they're initially responding yeah. if you can talk around you can talk around yeah, yeah. okay so, so so you've been successful oscar so what are you saying to them that's going to sort of like push them over the final step of accepting that yeah this has got to be done i've got the book yeah, so and, I, I think um, perhaps um, you've, you've picked up the Father Grove's book, like that was with him when he died. Maybe there's like so a, he's, a dramatic speckle of his blood on the cover of it. In the book, it says we should be bury our, our, our dead, but it also says in dire circumstances such as these, then um, then cremation is the only way and their souls still will be taken to see um to see the great one in the afterlife okay so with the combination of you saying that why am i making some like very salient points and the headsman sort of going like yeah they're right 
the, the, the people sort of slowly start to accept it. Uh, the the headsman, Josiah Means, turns to you, Weimar, and he says, uh, I, I believe, you, I believe uh, your friend is correct, uh, that this should be treated as a, a, as a plague or a sickness. If you are willing to, to burn the bodies, uh, and he sort of raises, you tell he raises his voice deliberately so the like the people in the crowd can hear him mm -hmm. rather than just you. He says, uh, "Let it be known that as the headsman of the village, I certainly bear you no ill will nor malice, and I would go further and say that you have performed a valuable service that has preserved the lives of many in this village, and you would be welcome to sit at my house and my table." And then I'll... sort of almost like ceremonially, because I presume you guys have got like a bit of a fire going, yeah. almost ceremonially, he like lights a torch and sort of mm -hmm. like obviously very slowly so like other people can see him doing it, he like hands it to you. Yeah, I'll I'll take it. And I guess we'll, with, with I guess, slower motions, because we're trying to be reverent yeah. uh, in... Like more reverent than Weimar would have been uh, on his own. Like if no one had been here to look at this, get, get, into the like, get the oil on you. Yeah. Fucking toss him on. <laughs> like pour the oil on. <laughs> but uh, I, I will will um, uh, attend decorum here and uh, will uh, lay him out on the because I've been chopping some wood here um, for this specific purpose. Laid out uh, so that a person could be laid on there. Yep. Um, yeah get get him on there uh and then because I've, I've prepped basically two cremation spots here um uh just slowly um uh, i'll hold up the torch and then slowly lower it down halfway i'll go wait oscar do you do you want to have a is there a the, the chaplain uh back home used to maybe say a word of a, a read yes. not a long one but Something. I'll uh, grab, grab the book and fl flick through at random to a, to a page and read out two or three lines and then slam it shut. Yeah, so so you like hold the torch up and he's like, And the wolf shall lie down with the lamb in fresh green pastures. Yeah. Sounds very relevant down with the torch <laughs> so, so while this is going on John you notice that uh, Josiah Means the headsman of the village has sort of spoken to like the um, the woman who's ne the red headed woman who's next to him you know to be his wife Rose Means and he's, he's whispered something to her and sort of gone like that and she's like headed off back to the building as the, the torch is lowered and like people are sort of gathered around and the, the body's being consumed you see her like walk back out and she's carrying like a very simple sort of like wooden like platter with like some wooden mugs on it there's like a a glass bottle with wine effectively in it and like a, a big like loaf of bread on it and she, she walks up and she hands it to josiah at which point as the the bonfire is going now consuming the body of father grove the the headsman of the village stands up and he like sloshes a load of this wine into these like cups and he says now now that what needs to be done has been done let there be no ill will between anyone gathered here for are we not all brothers and sisters in this in this land which although our forefathers knew of old is new and undiscovered to us let us not remember this incident as a a horrifying incident even though it, it was such let us let it rather bring us together in bonds of brotherhood and he like starts passing these these cups around and like tearing off bits of this bread and passing it around and everyone's like solemnly eating a bit of this bread and like having a bit of a drink together and, and he again he very obviously like so that people can see like walks over to you while I like pours you out some of this wine, yep. hands it to you, and then like hands you a chunk of this bread. Yep, uh, I'll I'll take them, being uh, aware of how morale works yes. <laughs> from from my soldiering days. So yeah, I'll, I'll I'm picking up on what he's putting in, and I'll I'll take his offerings and and 
sort of toast to yeah. him. And then I'll actually, on a, on a whim, I'll um, uh, like bite down on the bread, uh, bring out uh, like a eating knife, and just like tink on my my cup a little bit, and yeah, people are like. We all need to live. That that's it. Uh, at the at the end of the day and at the end of the night, we, we just need to live. And it's not always going to be easy. And I hope we all make it. And I'll do my best to make it so. Now, cheers. The crowd, so to speak. Everyone looks like a little bit like they, they don't really know how to respond to this. You, know, you see a few like sort of sad nods, and then a, a, a sort of hey, like, man. yeah, you say that a, a thin, sort of gangly man with a, a sort of like a large hook nose. You know, to be Isaac McDaniel, who's like the village carpenter. He, he steps forward and he he like raises one of these like wooden mugs in your directions, and he says. Uh, Here's to living. I'll a few of the people like raise their gla <laughs> raise their glasses. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's still quite a solemn affair. That everyone sort of raises their mm -hmm. glasses yeah. and drinks. A after that's dealt with, um, again people slowly start sort of dispersing back to their homes. Obviously, you've still got um, the one tethered zombie. So. After the woods, indeed. Uh, is there a moon out, John, or is it like totally black there? There is a bit of moonlight, but it's partially obscured by clouds. Okay. But when the clouds part, there is a little bit of moonlight. Yeah. Okay. So, is it is it strong enough to walk by to follow her, or do we kind of not we're not following her because obviously we have to rope, or do we kind of need enough torches to get us? All the way through the night. You, you, you'd, you'd be all right as long as you like didn't go into any like deep forests or anything. In the open, you'd be all right. Okay. Right. So, I guess what we we'll do is we we'll pick up eight or ten torches to bring with us, um, just in case we need to go anywhere dark, and then we we'll just head off. Okay. So, hopefully, you guys can see the. Uh, the red uh, map pin where you guys are currently in New Zealand. So, yeah. over the course of the evening, with you following after this shambling corpse on the rope, it travels north for 12 miles. Obviously, it's going at a fairly slow pace. Let's see if there's any random encounters on the way. Oh, there is. Let's see what we get from this. Oh, dear Look dear at man. Mr. Fancy macros here. That's it, man. Don't miss that. <laughs> Custom. Ooh, yeah. So let's see, we're in planes. Okay. <laughs> Right, fair enough. Okay, so you guys have been travelling for most of the evening. Sunlight starts to filter over the horizon. As soon as the, the rays of the sunlight hit the, the animated corpse, it once more becomes inert and just like onto the snow. You're just about to like presumably move up to it or get ready to settle in whatever you decide to do when you notice a, a slight well i'll tell you what maybe a surprise roll to see if you do notice anything so basically you just need to pick one of you guys to not make a surprise roll if you got a one or a two you're surprised and it's a d6 roll uh, i just rolled yeah you're not surprised so let's see what the older encounter distance is so we're in the wilderness. I'll make a macro for this when I get a chance. Okay, so 
as you're so well how do you guys react when the body just goes yes we'll have been expecting it right because we'll have seen the dawn coming yeah yeah and um, you're not surprised by that i guess like i i would just be like reeling in the the rope yeah it's <laughs> like oh there we go that's uh, that's our <clears throat> that's our spot and i guess we'll be looking for somewhere to get some you know five yeah. or six, six hours kit before yeah. we uh yeah okay yes so as you guys are just sort of like you know settling down you just Obviously, you've secured the body. That that's absolutely fine. You've roped it, roped it to a tree or whatever, just in case. As you're just about settling down for the the day, bizarrely enough, you sort of settling. Yeah, so, I'm we, assuming we, you guys get to sleep during the day and travel at night. I'm rather mm -hmm. assuming. You're mm -hmm. just about to settle down for a nice day of rest and that sweet, sweet D3 hit points. When you spot sort of like up ahead of you, probably about 150 yards away you see what appears to be a very small man he's he's carrying like a little short bow he's wearing furs um he, like i say he's quite small he's about he's like four foot tops he's wearing sort of like white furs and all of his hair including like his eyebrows and like his, his beard are purest white now, as you guys spot him, he doesn't actually seem to have seen you guys. You can see, like, it looks like he's trying to like follow some tracks or something, and he, he's got like an arrow in his bow, and he's like, and he's just sort of like, as you're there, he's sort of like crossing the path in front of you between the uh, the wolf forest and the um, the whale song forest. So from the forest on the east to the forest on the west, he's moving through the open, sort of following these tracks, but he's not spotted you guys. You're just over like a little. Little rise of snow. Um. So what I'd like to do is kind of move thirty or forty feet to the right of where everyone else is. Okay. And assuming I can do that without drawing attention to myself, I will call out, uh, "How's the hunting?" Let's see what he does. Okay. You call out, how's the hunting? And you hear something shouted back in a language you're not familiar with. Oh. Um. <clears throat> okay. Um. Does he look angry or? It's difficult to tell because he has these like massive bushy white eyebrows and like this massive beard so you can really only see like that much of his face and then he's got a like, long white hair okay um he, he looks a bit like if someone took like a tiny caveman and like crossed it with father christmas that's a bit what he looks like <laughs> and like say he's got uh, all these big bushy furs on us so you can't really tell and he sort of hunkers down as soon as you shout him and you just hear okay. these sort of these guttural sort of syllables shouting at you you don't understand okay so uh since he hasn't no shot me um i want to put my rifle away and kind of walk towards him kind of uh, with my hands out in a kind of peaceful gesture okay as you're talking you can see he's like he has got like his, his arrow and his bow but he's like he's sort of pointing it at you but he's not like he's got it tense but he's not like shot you and he's like game on num jam <laughs> um, and I'll just call out do you speak the common tongue he, he repeats what he said okay um, so assuming I can get close enough to him what I'd like to do is kind of offer him some food um, and see if he's willing to take it okay boom 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 Okay, you you hold out like one of your like, rations or whatever towards him, and he he sort of slowly lowers his like like I say cause he's quite small like I say he's like under four foot, he like lowers his little short bow and he's like, and then he like, like, grabs it off you and he's like.
and then he slowly starts like eating this ration once he's assured himself it's like not poison or anything okay at, w at which point he sort of like he, he pretty much like drops his bow on the floor and he's just like okay um okay so then I guess what I want to do then is try and explain that my name is John and ask him what his name is. You know, that pointing at myself saying John. Um, Dance a bit wolf style, you know. Um, he looks at you a bit bewildered, to be honest. Okay. Um, Okay. At this point, you can make me a, an, a monster reaction roll, if you will. So that's a 2d6 plus your charisma modifier. Which I'm hoping it's got the NPC reaction modifier on the character sheet. Because that would seem really weird if it hasn't. Okay. Uh, is it on the character sheet, or do I just roll 2d6? I'm just having a look. On that. Uh, I think it's not on the character sheet, but we talked about that during the character creation, and uh, I distinctly remember John going through them because I did mark my own NPC reaction thing. Uh, okay, so down. what's your what's your charisma? Sorry, my the, the seven is the sorry my yeah, my action one. is seven. seven. Oh, Which I think zero, right? Is my my charisma is seven, and John. Said that my NPC reaction modifier is minus one. Yes, yeah, so it's minus one if it's seven. Okay. So, so it's... my charisma is ten. Sorry, my charisma is ten. Okay, so that's just a straight two d six. Okay. And uh, nine. Okay, so with, with a nine, he, he just looks at you blankly. You're like, my name's John. Your name is. Okay. Uh, okay, so he, he like it's obviously you're like taller than him. He sort of holds his hands up and he's like, "Go back, Ram Jam." Okay, is he like suggesting that I kneel down? Is that? He just seems to be like, like reaching his hands up to you. So I can't really see what you're doing with your hands because yeah, he's just like camera. reaching his hands up like that. Okay, so I guess I'll kneel down beside him and see what happens. You kneel down next to me, sir. And then he starts sort of like, he's like, sort of starts like, not in a violent manner, but starts like taking hold of your clothes and he's like, like looking in your pockets and stuff like Okay. And what does he have on him, gear-wise? Is he? Um, he's he's wearing fairly crude gear. It's mostly like furs. He's got like a little sling with some arrows in it. He he's got like a short bow. Other than that, it's just furs, pretty much. Okay. Like I say, the the main odd thing about him is like he's got to say he's got these massive like bushy white eyebrows and like beard, and like all of his body hair appears to be like entirely white. Okay. Um. So, I guess I should. Uh, I want to kind of gesture for him to follow me and bring him towards the body okay. um, of Harriet. Okay, no problems. So, obviously, Weimar and Oscar, you've seen this sort of bizarre pantomime scene unfold in front of you. And then John starts bringing this strange sort of small white-haired figure towards the, the now inert body of Harriet. What are you guys doing while this whole bizarre panoply is unfolding in front of you? Well, I've, I'm putting my arrow away that I have had. <laughs> Not... <laughs> Um, since it seems that we're we're good, and 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, just waiting, uh, and I'll I'll nod to recognize that this individual has joined us when they get here. But I'm sort of not very subtle about the fact that oh, I'm standing guard because because you're different, you're new. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm not doing anything specific. I'm keeping my eye on on your friend. Yeah. The yeah, I'm just smiling a welcome as he comes over. The, the the small figure follows you up to the to the body, John. Um, and I guess I just want to kind of point at the body and then point north, and just see if he if he recognizes why a dead body would be moving north or does any. Okay, um, uh, at which point the, the the little figure looks a little puzzled, then sort of seems to go like, and then it rushes towards the nearest tree and starts like digging with its hands in the snow. Okay. At, at which point it like digs out like a fairly sizable rock, sort of carries it back over, so like stood near the body and goes. Oh, <laughs> and he's obviously intended to like smash the rock down on the head of this. Okay, so I'll try and take the rock off him. Um, yeah, you just like grab hold of it. And like, um, I just say that we are going north again, just pointing at the three of us, and then pointing north with this creature. The the, the little figure sort of. Shakes its head and said some says another few of these syllables in what sounds like a slightly more muted tone, and then it walks off to the west, like heading towards the forest. Okay. Um. Okay. I think we need to get better with languages. <clears throat> um. Well, I'm working on it. <laughs> he had the good, but he, he had good ideas. Uh, yeah. So that's, he that's obviously good. familiar with that concept. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. that's something. Um, and there are other people living here, which is something else. So yeah, mm -hmm. this thing's pretty good. Um, interesting look about him, though. Yes. I wonder what that's about. Or if he was just really old, but I guess he wouldn't be out and about. Hmm. It seems unlikely. Yeah. Uh, aside from like his small size and the, the white hair, the bushy eyebrows, etc., he, he looked like he was in fairly good shape and not of advanced years. Yeah. That's what made the white hair and everything look even odder. Because like, if he had been an old man, you'd have been like, yeah, white hair, that makes sense. Camouflage. Hmm. Small, small bodies, oh. less, less. Surface area covered in fur, keep you warm. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so are you guys resting up for the rest of the day and then pushing on yeah. by night? Yeah, I'll be reading yeah, the book. So. Okay, no problem. You carry on yeah. reading Father Drove's uh, prayer book. I think, I, I think, them, yeah, them, there may be something in this. Uh, when I get back, I may, uh, might take over his position. It's not. It's not the strangest thing that's happened this session. <laughs> yeah, and it, there is a vacancy it, now. I'll say it's, <laughs> it's probably near the top, but okay. So obviously, since you guys haven't really done any activity during the day, you'd regain your one d three hit points for resting during the day. Unsurprisingly, as night begins to fall, the corpse once again rises and continues its shambolic progress north. So I'm going to find the right thing. I'm going to reveal the next hex. Okay, so you make it to here because the body's still not moving very quickly. There are no random encounters to vex you 
during your travels this time. However, just as like you're getting to the end of the night and you've like you've seen what light start to hazily filter over the horizon and you're like any moment now the body's gonna drop down and like do its thing. You notice just before that happens, the body which has been like sort of heading unerringly unerringly north suddenly like turns and takes a few steps towards like the northwest. And then obviously the first rays of the light hit it again. Down into following the, the river in that sense. Mm. Pretty much. And just to make it clear, if it continued along that trajectory, would it cross the river or go along with it? It, it would cross the river if it carried on going across the river. Looking to the no looking to the northwest in like the new light of the day, you can obviously see to the east of you is the wolf forest still, this huge coniferous forest. Looking to the northwest, you can see what appears to be a range of like rolling hills, sort of rising up out of the landscape, obviously covered in snow. I'm going to make a quick roll to see what the weather's doing, so we've had a couple of days passing that. Okay, so the weather has actually sort of like warmed up a little bit. So you're starting to find it like a, a bit more comfortable traveling, you know, like you've not got to be as heavily swathed. There's still a bit of a light wind which is like blowing the snow on the floor around and stuff like that. But compared to like how it could be, it's pretty much a gentle breeze. But the temperature's like risen to sort of like 11 degrees Celsius. I don't know if we want to go following this thing across the river. What do you suggest? Can we tether it somewhere and come back another day? Oh, I wouldn't leave it. I might get eaten. You'd probably burn it. The villagers won't be happy back home, but... We can just tell them we lost it. Yeah. It got away. Yeah. <laughs> My sense is that we should really know what's causing this to happen. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I, I'm off the same mind. However, I, it, it does make me think. Uh, about making back, making our way back from wherever we might be going. Mm. The river won't make that easier. No, but we could build another boat. That is true. Um, and, you know, if if we went across the river onto the far side and we left the boat there, when we got back, we could actually travel south on the boat. Mm. I guess what I'm thinking is if we get up to them hills, and we crest the first one and there's castle main and the sailors from yonder boat wrecks and who knows what else mm -hmm. maybe some of them uh, uh, with the white hair and the, the beard what if there's I don't know uh, a battalion of these things there. Mm. Uh, we would only that's... have to survive the night, though, right? Because they mm. fall asleep during the day. Oh, sorry. So... Just to point out, guys, since you've been like traveling for two days, you'll need to like, do two rations each. Mm. Sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier. Yeah, and I'm, I'm keeping track. I'll take care of it all. Cool. Um... Aside from that, yes, I, I think it's... If we can find a source, even if there's multiple, if we can find where this is coming from, I guess, that would be very valuable. It's just that I'm thinking, what if over the next hill there's an entire village of, of this? Yeah. But why don't we follow her again tonight? And if she goes into the mountains, we can potentially, you know, scout them out in advance. Mm. You know, scout out the direction she's walking in advance mm. um, during the day. Um, and I can do that while you watch her. Right. 
Okay. Yes, that's good. Yeah, I can watch watch, and you can range. Yeah, that, that is yeah. Um, so that we don't walk into a really bad situation. Yes, or if we do, that we walk in during the day, and we yeah. can yeah potentially walk out afterwards. Yeah, at least it won't be this bad situation. I, I motion at the corpse. It'll be something else during the yes. day, presumably. Hopefully, there's not a variety in the hills that uh, goes about during the day. That would be not good. Okay, so, uh, John, I think we have our, our plan here. So. Okay, no problem. So, you guys rest up for the day. Obviously, again, D3 hit points. Right, we're actually going to spend the day building a boat. All right. All right, okay. Is... Sorry, we'll get enough rest that we're not exhausted, but I think our plan yeah. is to spend the day building a yep. boat to get across the river and to get us back to New Zealand at pace should the need arise. That's fine. You've got an entire day. There's ample um, material in the forest. I'll just make a quick roll so if there's any encounters during the day. There is not. So, yeah, you, you harvest the wreck as it would. You, you fact, obviously, it's not a massively sophisticated boat, but you make yourself a simple boat. That's not a problem. There's three of you. Uh, I'll also do a bit of foraging while we're gathering the wood, if that's okay, yeah, too. Yeah, go for it. Okay. okay. Okay, so you've got your boat. You've taken time to rest during the day. Once again, darkness starts to fall. And as previous, as soon as the last rays of the sun have faded, the body of... The unfortunate young woman you've been following to jerks upright and this time begins heading off northwest. It travels for six miles until it sort of gets to the edge of the river, at which point it doesn't even stop, it just goes straight into the water. Okay, on the boat <laughs> with the rope <laughs> and yeah, not a problem. After what seems like an interminably long wait, you see the the corpse sort of water pouring out. It probably like a few fish like attached to it, sort of slowly shambling its way up the riverbank, still heading northwest towards this range of hills. Obviously, you guys go across in the boat, following it. That's not a problem. Um, as you as it sort of starts reaching the edge of where these hills are rolling up, the sun starts rising again. Once again, the body hits the deck. Yeah, I think that's your cue, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so once the body hits the deck, what I want to do is walk forward the 12 miles that I expect her to walk tomorrow night. Okay. Um and see if I can see any tracks or any sign of anything untoward. Okay, in which case, let me, since you're technically be going into two hexes, I'm going to be on that. Apologies, it takes a while on the reveal with this, like, this like, polygon reveal tool. There we go, boom. Okay, so you'll effectively sort of be about here if i clicked on the right tool yeah so you'd be effectively about here with, with your scouting so you basically you head over this range of rolling hills and they eventually start rising higher into sort of the jagged peaks of mountains obviously you don't climb the highest of these mountains but you sort of head part way up some of them enough to just get a bit of elevation so you can see over the hills and survey the surroundings as you look to the south you can see more mountains and then beyond that still mountainous and hilly but it appears to be like covered in like a green and white covering of coniferous forests as you look to the north you can see what appears to be a large lake in the center of which is an island and on that island is what appear to be the ruins of some sort of ancient castle or fortification 
Okay. You've seen no signs of life within the ruins, although it's possible there could be. Cause, I mean, you you're looking sort of over like twelve miles. So yeah, yeah. But, it, okay. but it, it's obviously like ruined. It's like not like a a full working castle. It's like a crumbling like one. And beyond okay. beyond that lake, more mountains. Okay. So I will head back to the party. Um and uh explain that basically what I've seen. Um my immediate sense is that they're heading for this island. Can you please roll me a, a d6, please, quickly, Rob? Three. Okay, so you start heading back to the others. As you're getting to about sort of here, you know, you're just heading back from the, down from the mountains into the hilly areas. You, you're not quite sure because I, there's, there's a lot of echo amongst the mountains, as you'd expect. But you think from somewhere to the south you can hear like the sounds of like shouting but it's quite far away and indistinct so from some so, somewhere around this sort of region you can just sort of like catch sort of like the stray shouting of like voices sorry did you ping the map yep back here uh... Sorry, I'm not seeing it. You mean uh, 17014 or 17015? I'm going to try a slightly different time. Okay. Okay. Um, how long does it take me to cover six miles? Well, you can travel 24 miles in a day. Okay. Uh, and I've done almost 18 already. Yep. Okay. Um, so then I will just head back to the party um, and tell them about the witch's oil or the, the cast of runes I've seen there and the voices I heard uh, in the in the mountains. Um, Indeed, and you'd obviously recognise it as the witches. Are you've all heard the rumours? So. The rep, you guys, obviously, John comes back. He tells you what he's seen. He says that he thinks he's he's seen witches' Isle without this ruined castle on it. Obviously, but the noises sort of heard while he was travelling through these mountains. A, a proper castle. He said. No, it's a ruined. It's a ruined. But I was thinking, you know, the walls and everything, moat, uh, towers, the castle itself. Is it is it big? Is it, is it a fort? Is it a tower? It's more a. It's more a sort of from what you've seen. It's more like a collection of buildings that would have been once inside the perimeter wall. Of a castle, right. and there's only like a few bits of the perimeter walls remaining, and now like there's the ruins of the buildings inside it. So, you, you, to be honest, you can only really tell it's a castle from the few remnants of this like exterior wall that has survived. Well, uh, did you see what corpses? I didn't see anything. Um... So I heard some, what seemed like shouting to the south, um, kind of directly west from where we are now. Um, and my immediate guess is that this, this room is the only thing I've seen in that general direction. And I think it makes sense to assume that this creature will go there. Um, and my, my sense is, is that she will travel 12 miles to the coast of the lake um, and that from there she will potentially go out to the island um, so I think that we should follow her for one more night and see if she does go out to the island um, 
And then, because if we wait until, so she travels all tonight, and then we wait there, and as soon as she goes into the lake, we will know, and then we can move away from that location um, and come back during the day. Okay, yeah, might as well. And if she goes somewhere else, then I guess we'll yeah. reevaluate. Might as well, we came mm -hmm. this far. If, have we food? Yes, plenty of food. Okay. Okay, so are you guys all resting up during the day again? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you rest up for the day. When the evening comes, as predicted by Mr. Cameron, you watch as the corpse heads northwest for for six miles. It then once again wades across the river to the north. And as you correctly predicted, just as the sun starts rising above the horizon, it's just getting towards the bank of this lake, at which point the sun's rays hit it and it falls down to the ground inert. At which point can you all please roll me a d6? Five for me anyway. Mm -hmm. Two. Okay. As you're following the corpse to the bank of the, the lake, as you all look northwards across the, the, the fairly still cold waters, you can see the, the ruined remnants of this exterior wall of this castle and the few surviving remnants of the buildings that would have been on the interior in the, the bailey of the castle. As you're looking, Oscar, just as the, as the sun starts rising above the horizon, you think for a few seconds you see a figure wearing sort of fur and ragged robes holding a sword and a shield which the, the sun sort of glints off sort of stood on the wall however the sort of glint of the sunlight causes you to sort of shield your eyes and when you look back the sun having risen the figure is nowhere to be seen did, did any of you two see that? I'm sure no. I saw some Something, somebody, like a knight or something, has a sword and a shield, although he was wearing rags. Can't see him now. No. Hmm. Oh, this is a long way, I could have been mistaken. Yeah, I don't think whatever the situation is I don't think we're going to find knights here per se uh, so whatever it might be that looks like one I wouldn't say that it probably is one uh, though yeah, it could have been someone were carrying a stick and a basket or something yeah. yeah and there's all kinds of reflections of course but it is I guess or it was a castle. Hmm. So I guess someone could have found some. It would have to be really old, though. I don't know that the. Did they make things that would last this long back then? For someone to find them now and gear up? Well, I would imagine so. Uh... The, the ruins that they built um, uh, Castle Mine on, they, they'd lasted that long. They were stone, granted, but they were exposed to the elements. If something was buried, hidden, mm. perhaps it could last longer. And I guess if, if all this truly was ice, I guess it wouldn't have been... It would be very dry, uh, I guess, then, so... Maybe a wooden rock or rust, I guess. 
as you're having this discussion, you know, sort of amidst the rolling hills, your your conversation is disturbed by this loud braying slash bleating sound. And as you look around, you can see a short distance to the west is what appears to be a in the sort of area it's just started to get a bit mountainous is what appears to be a small horned goat grazing on the sort of scrubby vegetation and grass it sort of looks up at you momentarily Tom. okay so thinking to myself that that looks like dinner um, <laughs> I will. How far away is it? It's not that far away. To, to be honest, if you want to shoot, it's a herd animal. If you want to shoot it, I'm not even going to make a roll. That's fine. Okay, but then um, I'll shoot it. Yeah, <clears throat> not a problem. You, you shoot this goat. Okay. Uh, cool. So I then I'll walk over and pick it up and bring it back. And over the course of the day, I'll skin it and see what meat can be. Yeah. Taken from us. So we'll just treat this as a a normal sort of foraging roll. So it'd be roll a d6, and that's how many like rations worth you get. Oh, nice. So yeah, it's 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 a normal goat. It has a a sort of dappled like light brown uh, sort of grey white coat to it. Obviously camouflage in the mountains and the snow, etc. Perfectly normal small goat. Okay. Do any of you, aside from uh, aside from John goat hunting, do you guys do anything during the day? <clears throat> I uh, guess I could go out for a hunt, like an actual hunt. Yeah. You've got a one in six chance. So roll the dice. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Let's see if now what do you. Can you refresh my memory regarding um, the professions? Yeah, because mine is hunting. What I'm saying is, if you've got a profession, it's sort of like double your chance, so you'd have had a two in six. Right. Okay. Chance. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, okay, that, so obviously that'll take you a few hours. So I'll do a couple of random encounter rolls. See if you get anything. Okay. Two orcs, one chimera. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hot. Chaos sorcerer. Okay, can you roll me a d6 to see if you're surprised? Anything but a one or a two, and you're good. Okay. Yep. So I'll roll one for this thing. Okay, so neither of you are surprised. So you're out. Obviously, this is like 200 yards is like the distance when you... Right, both okay. Sort of not damage. Then. No, no, no. <laughs> or creatures. No, no, it's, it's good. It's not that good. Okay. So as you're sort of making your way around you're hunting you're trying to follow animal tracks etc you spot in the distance sort of itself seeming like it's like hunting and following trails perhaps the same ones you're following you see what appears to be an incredibly large sort of white gray wolf okay and as you so what would your sort of initial reaction be? And we're sort of talking like dire wolf size, so big, big. Uh, do we have these in the south? I guess not. This no, you don't really have dire wolves. Obviously, you've got wolves, but like this is like double the size of any wolf yeah, you've seen. It, this is, clearly this a wolf. is like a small car. <laughs> yeah, this is like the, this is like the sort of biggest wolf you've probably seen yeah. ever. Uh, that being the case, I, I do sling my my uh, my bow around uh, my torso. I'll just light a torch. <laughs> just immediately, I'll just like get get a fire going because <laughs> it's 
Okay. And As you sort of I'll... see it, it also yeah. sees you and it growls deep in its throat. Yeah, it is some distance away though. I'm oh yeah, yeah. Happy to note. So you you can see it appears to be sort of like cautiously trying to like sort of circle and get a bit closer, but obviously it doesn't want to directly come at you. Yeah. And I'll I'll light the torch uh, with my uh, tinder box. Is it? Yeah. So minus one torch. Get that lit. And. Uh, I'll counter circle trying to back away. Okay, so as you're backing away with this torch, you can see that this like huge wolf, now it's sort of like lifted its head, you can see it's actually got like a, a hare or perhaps a rabbit sort of in its jaws already. And as yeah. you're sort of backing away, like it's pretty much doing the same thing. So you're both sort of circling around each other and the circle's getting bigger as you're both sort of like keeping your eyes yeah. on each other, but in you're both sort of withdrawing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll I'll get back to the the camp. Yeah, no problem you beat feet back to the rest of them. Right. Now since this probably doesn't take a whole lot of time, can I save the torch in any capacity if I put yeah. it out afterwards? Yeah, yeah you yeah. just like dip it in the snow and yeah, you're like, oh, it's gonna take yeah. a while to dry, but otherwise it's yeah. good. Okay. Yeah, because you only literally lit it and sort of went. Yeah, because it's like gonna be like ten minutes of me being yeah. like is it gonna go down or yeah like yeah. so i mean they, they, they burn for like an hour so an hour, 10 minutes yeah. yeah okay so i i'll put it out and like hoof it back to camp yeah that's fine you you head back to camp where the rest of them are anyone doing anything else uh, i'll just do a bit of foraging at the end okay. of the day while mm -hmm. we're waiting No, I'll just check on the state of the corpse. Not that yeah. it's got further to go now. But, yeah. um, obviously, it it is decaying like a corpse, but mm -hmm. since it's it's been less than like a week, it's not so sort of like entirely putrefied. Although, like the smell is starting to get a bit a bit severe from it. Yeah, like a. Obviously, because it's been exposed to the elements, like bits of flesh have sort of come off it. And it, there, there's a spot of warm weather, as we know. Yeah, it, it's there's a there's a distinct reek rising from it. So, so as you guys have been pushing on, sort of like being near to this thing has been getting like more and more unpleasant, and it's slowly as it's like. Cause it's like moving through trees and like it's snagging like bits of its skin that are just getting torn off and it like because it doesn't care so it as you're moving on it's slowly starting to look less and less like the woman who you knew in the village and now it's just looking more and more like tattered bits of like flesh and muscle on a, this sort of like skeleton so yeah it's quite unpleasant but it, it doesn't move during the day, it doesn't show any signs of reacting to anything during the day, it just lies there inert in the, the snow. Okay, so I've seen D3 hit points back again if you've been resting. Over the, as the night begins to fall, the wind has started to rise it's now quite a sort of a, a fair I suppose you call it a moderate wind it's about sort of 18 miles an hour but it's like a sort of steady wind so it's like whipping the snow up sort of obscuring vision a little bit um, although the temperature's still not too bad the wind makes it feel a good deal cooler and of course as the last light of the sun fades away once again this the putrefying ragged remnants of this woman rise to their feet she immediately shambles to the shore of this lake and just keeps going and disappears under the water um, so since we were expecting that i think we've taken the rope off her and we'll just kind of let her go that's fine um
Okay. So something is attracting the dead to this island, it feels like. Um, okay. Again, Oscar, as you're sort of looking up at the same, on the same section of the wall you spotted the figure previously, you can now see a, a sort of... I mean, you can't pick out details. You're still like over six miles away. But you can see this sort of figure wearing like perhaps monk robes or some sort of like tattered robes you can definitely see like a, a, a so you think a wooden shield like maybe like a metal rim and a sword and it just appears to be stood on one of the walls sort of like looking outwards there look like you can mm. all, you can all see it as he points it out huh i wasn't going mad Definitely not a place to go at night. Or at all, maybe. <laughs> As you're watching, eventually you will see the sort of waterlogged, soggy remnants of the zombie that you've been following emerge up the bank or onto the island and sort of disappear amongst the, the ruins of these buildings. Yeah. That is good to know. <laughs> That's definitely somewhere to go. This is probably something we need to look into periodically. Come back here now and then, see what's going on. Should we go over during the day and have a look around? Those creatures seem inert during the day and potentially quite a few could be slain. Well, we've come so far. Yeah. Uh... Hmm. I, th I think it w if we do go, I think we might want to Keep an eye on it for a little bit. See if anything does happen during the day. Okay, so if that's the plan, how many like days are you guys planning on scoping out the place? I would have just like let's stick around uh, with uh, with the dawn for a couple of hours, like just seeing if anything moves. Okay, yep, so you you wait until the the sun comes up. As the sun comes up, the figure sort of drops down below the sort of lip of the wall and disappears from view. You you wait around during the day. You don't see any signs of life within the, the ruined fortification. Okay. Shall we explore? Yes. Yeah. Right who? Okay. So you guys getting your makeshift boat that you've been bringing with you, like say like your little canoe, you, you paddle across this eerily still lake. The the waters are extremely clear here. You can see a few like fish swimming around in it. Um, although the water itself is quite cold, uh, you you sail across it, no real problems. You arrive on the far bank on this island. You can see, like I said, these, the few crumbled remnants of what appears to be an ancient sort of stone outer wall of some sort of fortification. Um, it looks as though there were once towers, but they've long since crumbled away. Within, you can see the, the ruins and the rubble of various buildings. And I'm going to move you on to another map. Which I'm hoping you guys should be able to see. Yep. Okay, now I've set this map up so you should only be able to see like the the view of your guys like characters. 
obviously the, the ruins that whilst they don't impede movement you can jump over and they do block line of sight although do you know what I'm actually going to turn that off because that's a bit ridiculous such a ruin the day and then it really matters at night so let me just turn that off boom there we go hopefully you can all see the map now yeah and a bunch of tokens as well yeah that's fine Okay, so as you guys, all of those tokens, I know they're sort of monster tokens, but they appear to be as you're sort of moving through the ruins, and obviously we're not in combat rounds, so feel free to like move your own tokens where you will. As you're sort of moving around, you can see that those tokens are basically various bodies, the sort of skeletons are like long decayed bodies that are mere bones and scraps of cloth the the zombie style tokens are more recent bodies that still have flesh clinging to them as you move through the various buildings which as i say have got sort of like trees and vegetation growing amongst them they're little more than ruins you come across a number of what appeared to be stone tombs or sarcophagi each of which is carved so that the lid shows a figure a warrior with a sword sort of running down the length of its body arms folded across it there and a serene expression on its face with its eyes closed each of the as you sort of move around and look at these various different sort of tombs each of them is distinct although they're similar Basically, it looks as though they've all got the same body, but the faces are all like carved differently. Fascinating. Although some of the, a lot of the finer details of the sculpture are obviously been like lost to time because they're quite weathered, but you can still make out these figures. Okay, what do you want to do, guys? Should we kill all these creatures while they sleep? Before we potentially open one of these sarcophagi? Um, any specific ideas on what exactly we should do regarding that? The death of the creatures or the sarcophagi? Yeah, they have the things um my sense was a, a hatchet to the head to the general neck area yeah we know an arrow to the head so stop um, so, that creature we met seemed to think that you know damage to the head was yeah. sufficient um And that could be done relatively quietly. Um, yeah. Okay. Grab uh, a rock. Yeah. Uh, Weimar is just going to stomp on skulls, I guess. Yeah, but that, that's not a problem. You can certainly do that. So I think, John, what is next is uh, a, a, a patrol of putting the boots. Stop it, us. Stop it, us. Systematic slaughter. That is absolutely fine. So, you guys head round and you decapitate, stomp, and dispatch these creatures. So, just give me a moment while I walk these tokens off. Which will handily make the map a bit clearer as well. Yeah, so you guys wander through the ruins and pretty much stomp all of these inert corpses, either cutting their heads off, stomping them into paste, etc. Obviously that takes a fair old amount of time, 
so it's it's about midday by the time you finish doing that I think that we should open this one here on the top left because it's kind of isolated from the others and if we open it and it goes wrong we can still make it to the boat um okay uh, so i'll uh i guess i'll have my uh hand axe to hand okay as we try and open the sarcophagus okay so can whoever's opening it make me a strength roll please is this an open door roll or just a strength roll? It's just a strength roll. And a success. Yep, so it, it, it's, it's like a big heavy stone slab. So it takes a bit of like grunting and like probably getting like a stick to use as a lever and stuff like that. But eventually you, you manage to heave this, this sarcophagus lid off and sort of like crashes down next to it. Inside the stone sarcophagus, you can see what appears to be a wizened sort of almost like sort of bog mummy style sort of corpse you know a very leathery skin that's drawn tight around the bones it appears to be wearing the the remnants of some sort of robes like hooded robes but they're sort of like stained and decayed uh, its arms are crossed across across its chest and there is a metal sort of like long sword sort of gripped in its hands with like the blade pointing down Towards its feet. Okay. Uh, what condition is the um, the sword in? The sword looks almost new. Is there anything else that uh, sort of like inorganic material uh, on the on the corpse? Not like that you can any, see any jewelry or like. However, you do notice one odd thing, as you're uh, as you're sort of like looking around it, like the body, as I say, it's like bog mummy mm -hmm. style yeah it's leather quite, yes yeah, it's, it's pretty well preserved but as you're sort of looking around it you notice that where like the eye sockets are on this uh this body there's just like a sort of a mass of like scar tissue okay like like of the sort which you'd see on like someone who had like mad loads of like burns on them mm -hmm. like someone who we used to know yeah <laughs> And indeed, yeah, it does put you in the minds of the, of the scars at the end of the priest had. Does it seem like the bog mummy was burned or the person who became the mummy was burned? It looks like it's quite old scarring. So obviously, you can't know for definite. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you think possibly before it was as it is now? Yeah. Okay. So I guess something happened here. Is there, John, any writing on the tomb? It looks as though it was once, but it's like long yeah, worn away, abraded, abraded away by the elements. Yeah. Well, look at where, where the ears are. Of. Uh... Elves have pointy ears. Does this thing have pointy ears? Now, now you mention it, no. <laughs> does it? Does this one doesn't have a shield? Does it? No. No. Okay. And did any of the other creatures that got stomped on have like weapons and shields, or were they all kind of zombie-like? They, they were all just sort of zombie-like. Sorry, John, did we lose you there for a second? Yeah, I, I think you you might have uh, hiccuped there, or your connection. Oh, right, okay. Anyway. Um, no, they didn't have any weapons. They were all just on okay. Right. Okay. So then, it's reasonable to assume that these creatures also rise at night, and therefore we should potentially put them all on a bonfire. It seems strange that they all climb back in and pull the sarcophagus lids over them. I was just thinking that 
they probably don't, even if they. I guess, and I'll. Is it possible to look at the lid? Yeah. Um, is there anything on the on the inside cover? Uh, and what I'm thinking is, has the thing been banging its head or clawing at the, at the lid? I guess there. Uh, I guess like skin scrapings and whatnot on the. the there lid. aren't claw marks. However, as you examine it, you notice there are marks sort of that show like the lid's been like slid off several times. If they, if these things, get out on their own. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we don't I want don't... to be around, do we? No. Not to come walk underwater. We don't want to leave them back. Hmm. Because these things could take apart a house, I bet, if they can just get out of one of these on their own. Okay. So, Cameron, do you think we should just open all of these and pile them up like cordwood? Yeah, I do. I'm. I guess it's hard to know what's the right thing to do, but. Okay. First of all, and I'll I'll put um, I'll switch my hand axe out for my short sword. Okay. I'll put the short sword on the um, on like in uh, one of the eye sockets, like just above. And I'll just say, Cameron, would you please, like, touch the corpse? Let's see if it moves when you touch it. And if if it does, I will slam down on the thing. Okay. So I will uh, basically try and grab the sword okay. and pull the sword out, um, and see if that makes the creature move. Okay. While the last girl runs away. I'll step back. <laughs> Roll me a d6, John. <laughs> uh, tree. You reach out and snatch the sword out of the corpse's grasp, it does not react. Okay. Uh, I, I let out a. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was hoping for that. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, I, I think to myself. What are we doing here? <laughs> Surviving. Then I just push that down. Okay. Um, I guess we'll take this one out then. Uh, uh, there's a. We can just put it here on the sort of. Yeah. Thorough way or. Yeah. And I can start chopping down timber. Um. Yeah, no problems. Okay, corpse into the pile of bones here on the... Yeah, the that's absolutely fine. You, you lift it out, it's quite light. Uh, doesn't, doesn't react at all. Uh, is it in rigor mortis? Is it just like, huh? Does it, is it flexible? It's flexible, all? yeah. It is flexible? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think these need to be burned. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely need to do that. Mm. And while we're at it, I'll I'll get the hand axe and I'll I will chop off the head uh, of this one as we lay it. Yeah, the that's road. absolutely fine. G given the like leathery toughness of the flesh, it takes you a few swings more yeah. than it would did with the others. But yeah, you lop its head off. Yeah. Okay. Good. And mm. I, again, there's a there's a sigh of relief that like my frenzy chopping actually didn't revive it. Um, nope. Listen. Oof. Yeah, and I'll I'll leave that and go scope out the the next sarcophagus for us to. Okay, uh, so do you want to ping me on the map which one you're looking at next? I think we go with this uh, one and the next one. Okay. The closest one. Yeah, no problems. It, it takes you a little while again to open it, but you open it and there's a. It's not identical, but it's a a figure wearing similar robes and with the same sort of state of like mummification about it. Again, it has a sword laid over its chest. It, it shows no signs of reacting when you like prod, poke it, etc. 
Okay. And if I take the sword? Doesn't react. You take the sword. Okay. Okay. Into the pile it goes. Okay. Same so, thing though. I, I will chop off the heads of these things. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. It's no problem. Okay, so just to sort of speed through this bit. When you check out the the sort of four crypts that are in this sort of area, yeah, they again have a similar creature in. Again, it doesn't react. So you take mm -hmm. the four of them out, chop the heads off, put them in the pile, etc. When you Let's see if I just zoom out a little bit. So when you guys sort of make your way sort of a bit further down, so sort of to here-ish, the three corpses on the, the left-hand side of the map, so the three tombs, as you go to to look at these, you can see that the, the quality of the sculpture on these three tombs, so I'm just going to grab your your guys and move them down there oh i'll take, take a tomb with you there you go <laughs> have, a, have a free tomb guys okay this is where we let, let, let me just let me just magically move him back up there we go look at that <laughs> power power of suggestion the floating tomb okay so as you guys get down here these sort of three tombs that you're near i'll say the the quality of the carving on these is much finer even though again it's slightly degraded by time and the weather but like more of it seems like the, the there's no text again but the see more details of the figure they have more sort of like flowing like furs and robes you could, on these figures you can make out what appears to be like the sign of some sort of like sunburst symbol on the okay. the robes Okay. I'll start making drawings of those. Yeah. Any other uh, like fancy regalia on these? Uh, do they have anything that has been preserved? I guess. You see, you see by looking at the carvings on the sort of um, stone that each of them has like a like an amulet or a talk around their neck, mm. which again seems to be like a sunburst pattern yeah. in like a round sort of like amulet effectively. Yeah, no writing though. On... <laughs> no. Really also right. the, the pommel of their swords appears to be round and have the same sunburst symbol on it. Yeah. Well, the, the pommel on the like carved stone bit. Mm. Okay, I guess this, this is the royalty then. <clears throat> or nobles. Yeah. Or the upper echelons of the religious sect. That's true as well, yeah. Uh, or warrior priests or whatever they were. Yeah. Okay, so three more for the fire. Yeah, I, again, takes a bit of time because, like, the. Like I said, these are like even like heavier, sort of heftier, like mm. built to last sort of like tombs. So it does take you a good deal of time to lift these lids off. But again, you find these similar sort of corpses inside, although the robes have survived a bit better due to the better quality of the tomb. You can just about make out since the colours like leached out and faded. Some of these like sort of sunburst patterns on them. Again, swords that you can see the like mouldering rotted remnants of like furs that would have once gone over their shoulders so around these brown leathery flesh sort of mummified warriors okay but none of them have had a shield right they've all been just swords that's correct okay yeah i do wonder about that <clears throat> maybe we should check the last one Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright, so, yeah, it, it is the last one. So are you guys on the standard like behead throwing the pile for these three? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Because they're in slightly better condition, it takes a bit longer to like chop their heads off. Obviously like the I, day's I, getting on, but you're like Yeah. Yeah, chop I'm, I'm envisioning off a, in the a pile. nightly pyre. Yeah. yeah. In the pile. I I am amused by the fact that some groups might have like back in the day standard door opening procedure we have a different one <laughs> it, it involves decapitation yeah, standard decap procedure yep 
Okay, so, uh, decap, decap. So you all move over to the the final tomb. Now, as you enter the sort of the ruins of the building that this one's in, you can see that like if if the three last tombs you looked at were like good, and the, the ones you looked at earlier were like all right, that this is like the daddy of like carved tombs. It's like like most of the carving because again, there's no. Well, there's no writing, but there are some like weird like pictograms around the edge of the the lid, which like don't mean anything to you guys, but they're perhaps some form of language. Again, this carving on the lid of this is like immaculate, and it shows this like what appears to be like quite a success tomb. It's quite big. It shows quite a big fellow, and he's like he's wearing like sort of furs over his shoulder. He's wearing what appears to be a crown. With like a sunburst on the front of it there's like sunbursts all over his robes he's holding a sword has a shield by his legs big sunburst on the shield sunburst on the pommel of the sword again he has like a sort of ringleted with like um sort of like braids in it sort of like ringleted beard it's so like well carved you can see all the individual like ringlets of the beard and as you look as you continue looking at the tomb around the sort of sides of it is what appears to be um, almost like um you know like sort of bayer tapestry style where they have like one big scene that like wraps around it's like that and this carving appears to show a group of warriors again all wearing this sunburst motifs sort of tied to what appeared to be large stakes there's flames licking around at their feet and you can see what appear to be figures sort of stood with their backs to you the audience sort of looking on as these knights are sort of being burned at the stake effectively the people who are burning them look kind of humanoid human they, they, they do they do look human i mean their their mode of dress is odd and sort of archaic to you but you can see like a number of them are holding what recognizably look like farm implements okay okay not the first that, time these guys have been burnt i find that very interesting because this would have happened this is the story of how these people came to be maybe because why would you if this is the lord of the castle and there was a revolt the peasants burned all these the peasants wouldn't have carved this nice tomb for him so i'm thinking this is them back in the day mm -hmm. right because it's why would all this exist if this was a rebellion that actually destroyed these uh, whatever these knights were Hmm. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we're getting oh, fairly nice late on the day by now. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, so it's just uh, starting to fall. Yeah, like, is this a case of, like, us pushing against the last rays of the sun? Pretty much. <laughs> okay, so I guess, are we opening the thing? Yes, I think we definitely yeah. should. Okay. Okay. Now this is this one's even heavier than the previous mm -hmm. one. You will get it open because there's three of you, obviously. So what I'm going to say is, can you pick one of you to please roll me a d6 roll? Cameron, you were very good with the last one. Okay. Anything but a one or a two? No, not good. Okay. No, so, if, sorry, just if it's a surprise roll, I'm not surprised. It's, it's not. It's not a surprise roll. Okay. Yeah, I don't think any of us will be surprised what happens next. <laughs> so just as you just as you guys are sort of like it's a lot heavier than you'd expected and it takes you a lot longer to move it. And just as you're lifting this lid, like the last rays of the sun are disappearing behind the horizon. Now Cameron and Weimar, you're sort of you're sort of lifting the thing. Oscar, you happen to be looking around and as you're looking around you notice that like sort of tendrils of like a low-lying mist 
have started to sort of like creep in, sort of around about like knee height. And sort of as you guys are like lifting this lid off, you know, like heaving and sweating and moving this lid off, soon the, the sort of whole of the ground is sort of swathed in this film of mist. So it looks like you're standing in this white pearlescent sea from which these ruins sort of like jut out like islands or rock formations. But you get the lid off just as the uh, the last rays of the sun are sort of disappearing. And inside you can see this figure. There's still like quite well preserved because the tomb's even better. There's still a few like wispy strands of beard hair and actual hair around a sort of walnut brown leathery flesh of this mummified warrior you can see there is a large wooden shield with a metal rim around it near his feet he has a sunburst sword clasped across his chest and has like his furs have survived in better nick basically and on the top of his head is what appears to be a crown made of gold with a sunburst sort of motif like emblazoned on the front of it. Like all of the other bodies, he he appears to be like missing his eyes and there's like a mass of scar tissue where each of his eye sockets was. Okay. You've got a couple of rounds before like the light has gone and all these mists sort of around you. What do you do? I kind of torn because my immediate sense is, is that if he does wake up, it would be good if he didn't have a sword and a shield. But I'm also like, that's a very shiny crown. Um, and I'm not smart, so my sense is that I'll instantly grab the crown. Okay. <clears throat> that's absolutely fine. Romy D6. Four. Okay. So, as you reach in to get the crown, the mists that sort of around you at of knee height seems to flow up and into the tomb in front of you. And when it recedes, the body that was once in the tomb is no longer there. Okay. Whoa, what? Uh, I will step out with, with the quickness to look at our corpse pyre. Okay. You look in the direction there? of your corpse pile, it is not there. We need to go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. Okay, we'll I, just I hold that for a second, you. guys. Did we just put every enemy on the exit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess we'll just crawl into these tombs, right? <laughs> just hide in there until daylight yeah. and then leave. To be honest, it's not the worst idea. Okay, so as you guys start moving out, so obviously you can move, um, I think it's 30 feet, you can move from the correctly. Each square is five foot. So you guys have like, you're up and running basically. So make, make your first move. Okay, so high tail in it, I guess. Yeah. Basically, um, you have to go off the northern edge of the map to get to your own. Um, to the top edge of the map to get to okay. the So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, can I see any of these guys? Yeah, if, if there's nothing blocking your way, you can see them. So as you all start moving, you can see these figures. They're not shambling like the, the creatures you saw earlier. Really. They appear to walk with slow purposeful steps each of them holding a sword as you 
as you watch the sort of like mist sort of like swirling around them with these sort of like robe these like monk sort of warrior monk robes on they they slowly start to almost solemnly sort of moving out from the ruins of the buildings so i will make their move could i have shot before they moved or were we yeah, just yeah. moving before we yeah you can take a shot okay so i'll take a shot at this guy uh to my left Ooh, that's not good. Also, the D10 for the... Yeah, you need to roll a D10 to see if it... Oh, it did go off. It just missed. Okay. Yeah, it does go off and miss. They don't even flinch. Okay. So, which one are you shooting at? I was... Uh, this one here on my left. Okay. Kind of in the closest one to be in our way. Yeah. Can I also take a shot at that? Yeah, go for it. With the bow. Okay. Nineteen. Okay, let me just check his uh his AC. If this doesn't hit, I, I think we might need to skip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as the old as the old saying goes. <laughs> that just hits. Great. <laughs> that is great. Uh, three damage. Okay, no problems. Though I don't think they necessarily care. They don't seem like the type to care about <laughs> this kind of thing. Okay, yeah, so one of your arrows like into the chest of this creature. You notice it was walking forward, but then as like your arrows like through the air, it's like and the arrow like hits it there, but it's like head snaps around to face the direction of the arrow. Okay. Take a slingshot. Okay. Okay, so unfortunately your your stone, your pebble, whatever you're firing, does like hit it, but it just like spangs off it, doesn't really seem to do any damage. Oh damn. They're tough. Run. Okay, let me <laughs> the chopper. Oh. Yeah, I guess it's gauntlet time. Okay, so one thing you do notice uh, is just sort of saying that why Mar is you're looking around. You notice that the only one that seems to actually be heading towards you guys is this one that you've just shot at. The, the rest of them are just sort of like slowly making their way through the ruins, but they're not like converging on your location or anything. Hey, just keep going, Cameron. Okay. So I will... Uh... As, as you shout, just keep going, Cameron. You notice like the nearest of, the, of these creatures suddenly go... And like turn the heads towards you. Keep going, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Cameron, it's over to you. So I will move to there, um, kind of trying to stay ten feet away from this yep. creature. That's fine. Don't forget if you if you forfeit like doing anything else, you can like double your move. Oh, oh no! Yeah, I'll like if, double him. if you just like, <laughs> yeah. if you just like, yeah. and just like, yeah. yeah, that is. I think that is the sound effect for this. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, <laughs> much, pretty much, Cameron. You've like run to the edge and like jumped in the boat. You're like <laughs> pushing the boat like into the water. <laughs> come on, guys! Come on! Wait for me. Okay, so as you jump in the boat and obviously you push it out and there's like a loud splash as it hits the water you notice as this is a loud splash all of these 
these creatures that are nearby all suddenly turn their heads in your direction and stop like, moving towards you. Okay. Now, they're not going to get a chance to get to you before you push the boat out. So you push the boat out and you watch as the as the sort of like the five who are nearest move like right up to the edge of the water and then sort of with their swords held up and then they stop. Okay. And you um, guys paddle back towards the shore as you watch these these mummified undead warriors sort of like becoming smaller as they sort of fade away into the distance. Now, weren't those the ones you cut the heads off? There's... You saw what happened with the... Yeah. With the Lord sarcophagus? The mist. Oh, it happens to all of them. Oh. I don't think they're necessarily bodies anymore. Mm. I think they might be ghosts. Uh, as as we frantically <laughs> make our way. Uh, so I think they're ghosts. Oh. <laughs> was there any sense of where the mist came from? It seemed. Or was it? I mean, was it you'd, there? You'd, you'd have probably seen this, Oscar. It seemed to just like sort of slowly like seep out of the ground. Came from, came from all over. Mm. Like like the whole island was breathing smoke. Mm. And okay. as as he says that, I think it was as though the whole island was breathing smoke, and you paddle back towards shore. That is where we're going to draw an end to the session for this evening, guys. Thank you very much for playing. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll, we'll sort out XP and whatnot shortly. But and obviously, I'm happy to chat for a while but thank you very much for playing guys i hope you enjoyed it yep. yeah brilliant john thank, thank you very much and thank you to anyone who's watching this either now or in the future hopefully we'll catch you on the next episode so i'll stop the stream here